I see two Kents of them. Uh oh. I don't. I only see one Kent. Oh no, I see Kent again. Okay, Karen, if you can hear us, you're signed in as Kent Treen again. Um, Lita said she re-emailed you the link. So um, I le why don't we get started though? It's already 6:32, and then um, let's do the roll, and then maybe Karen can log back out. Okay, are we ready to roll here? Okay, we're live. Great, thank you. All right, so welcome to the City Council regular meeting for Tuesday, March 15th, 2022. Madam City Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mayor Christy Malchow. Present. Deputy Mayor Kaylee Clark. Here. Council Member Karen Moran. Council Member Karen Howe. Here. Council Member Amy Lamb. Here. Council Member Kent Treen. Present. Okay, and we know that uh, Council Member Moran is present. She's just having a little trouble. Oh, you know what? It's our city manager who's logged in under Kent Treen, actually. Oh, yes. It's not Karen Moran, so maybe Karen is not actually with us. Mr. City Manager, you're showing up as Kent Treen. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so, I, yeah. I, okay, so, okay, so we're missing. She was here. She was here, but she's running home right now. Okay, okay, so. Christy, right. I imagine she's probably running behind because she was at City Hall. Okay, all right, so we'll know that she's going to join us. Um, she was supposed to say the Pledge of Allegiance again, though, so I'm going to have to skip, um, and I don't have my list because my list is at home. So, uh, Council Member Howe, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Can you do it a little slower tonight, Erin? Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> okay. A little slower. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the States, United of States of America, America. And, to and to the republic for which it stands, which it one stands, nation under God, nation. indivisible, under God. with liberty indivisible. and justice for all. And justice for all. <laughs> Almost. Hey, it's over there. Well, <laughs> I'm looking at you guys. Flag. <laughs> okay, to entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. Approve the agenda. My motion to approve the agenda. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Um, Opposed? Okay, by a vote of 5 0, the agenda is approved. Uh, next, Council has an executive session. This is for pending and potential litigation pursuant to RCW 42.30.1i. Um, let's see, this schedule says we're anticipating about 30 minutes. Um, I suspect it might be longer, but we can always extend, so we'll go for 30 minutes. So we'll be back at 7.05. So council, if you're home, you'll need to um, pop over onto the other link. Good evening, everyone. Council will be extending the executive session until 7.20. Again, council will extend the executive session until 7.20 p.m. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Council will be extending the executive session again until 7.40. Again, they'll be extending it till 7.40 p.m. Thank you. So cancel, we need to wait another minute till 7.40, I think.
Vita, is it already set up to record? Like, is it recording or is it not quite 740? Ooh. Okay. Is it me? Oh, why do we have an echo? There we go. Yeah, keep the mic off. <laughs> That's better. Okay, I've got 740. She's not on yet. We can't hear City Hall. Lita, they're saying they can't hear you. Can, oh, can you hear, can hear me? me now. Okay. I can hear you now. All right, very good. Okay. Next, we have public comment. So pursuant to the governor's emergency proclamation 20-28, the city is unable to provide an in-person location for the public to listen to the virtual city council meeting this evening. Meetings are still accessible to the public and public comment is able to be submitted. Written public comment will be accepted until 5 p.m. on the day of the meeting. Submit your written comments by email to the city clerk at L. H-A-C-H-E-Y at Sammamish.us and the City Council at City Council at Sammamish.us. To give verbal comment, please join the Zoom meeting if you'd like to give verbal pu public comment. Information on how to join is listed under meeting accessibility at the top of our City Council agenda. You may give up to three minutes of verbal public comment live during the meeting. During public comment, the City Clerk will ask attendees to praise press the raise hand button if they wish to give comment. If joining the meeting by phone, you'll need to dial star nine to raise your hand. When it's your turn to speak, the clerk will unmute you and, will get, and you'll be given the ability to turn on your web camera if desired. You will be notified when you have 15 seconds remaining to wrap up your comments, after which you will be muted at the end of the three minute comment period. Madam City Clerk, do we have folks waiting to give public comment? Please raise your hand if you'd like to give comment tonight. Presently see two people with their hands, three people with their hands raised. I will unmute, I will transfer the first uh, attendee to a panelist. Ramiro Vadorama. Here we go again with the new episode of Malchowgate, the long running saga of alleged violations and mishandling of confidential information by city manager Mayor Malchow and others. Following last week's episode of exorbitant severance payoffs to the city manager and prior week episodes of publicly cited ethics violations, mishandling of information, non responsiveness to a request for a publicly funded city investigation. Now we have the latest episode, blatant cover-up. Two weeks ago, my public comment was on how my PRRs uh, for the unredacted investigation of the city manager had been delayed four times for over four months. I then showed the council that the, the uh, attorneys had not spent one second on my request or the others by citizens. I asked who specifically had told the attorneys not to work on these requests while pretending they were being worked on and asking for the delays. Mayor Malchow did not answer, but instead informed the public that the council wanted the PRRs addressed. Then last week, we learned that the city manager was suddenly terminated and offered a payout of likely 400,000 with the signing non-disclosure that's a gag order, preventing him from discussing the misdoings he had witnessed. It also denied him the public hearing he had requested if actions were taken against him. Where in public comment, he had mentioned that his assertions that Mayor Malchow in specific and others were guilty of even more egregious ethics violations of mishandling of confidential information and behavior. This statement was similar to public comments made by resident Michael Scholes and PRRs that he had regularly received confidential information from Malchow and others on the council. I've repeatedly cited that the need for Mayor Malchow and others committing similar allegations need to be investigated. Now the latest episode in this saga is March 9th. I am told that the report is considered entirely entire attorney-client privilege in anticipation of a, a potential litigation. 
Interestingly, the investigation was of the city manager who has now been paid off to be quiet. So who is the potential litigant of this report? The citizens and I are not stupid. We have a full cover up and play with four months delay. And then after being told it was work on and showing proof it wasn't, they terminate the city manager so he cannot give and have the public hearing. This as the allegation shine brighter on Mayor Malchow and council. The reports and the attorneys are funded by taxpayer money and state law requires the investigation report findings be made public. We also need to have an investigation into Mayor Malchow. 15 seconds. Council members who have been alleged to have ethics violations and mishandling of information and appear to be trying to hide information citizens have the right to know. We need to now have a council that is committed to stopping Malchow Gate and holding itself accountable. And Thank you, time is up. A democratic government, so our city. We should not ask to be settled for less. I will now promote the next attendee. Rosina Farrell. Good evening, City Council. My name is Roisin O'Farrell and I live here in Sammamish. Tonight I wanted to talk to you about declaring April 2nd World Autism Awareness Day. Um, so what is autism? Autism spectrum disorder is a developmental disability that can cause significant social communication and behavioral challenges. It presents challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech and nonverbal communication. The CDC estimates that one in every 44 eight-year-old children have been identified with ASD. This is based on health and special education records from children living in 11 communities across the United States during 2018. However, this is not a one-size-fits-all condition. When you've met one person with autism, you've only met one person with autism. This is a spectrum condition. My son was diagnosed with autism when he was eight years old, and in that time, I would not profess to have been an expert with autism, but I am an expert in my son's autism. Now he's 21 and about to age out of the help and support of the Isqua School District, and the yellow bus will no longer stop at our home in June. I'm beyond pleased to tell you that he has found part-time employment on the campus of one of our major employers here in the region. And he's really excited about this opportunity. Now, this is where my world and you on the council begin to overlap. My son is always, will always need public transportation to help him lead the independent life that he is so capable of. At present, the 269 bus will take him directly from Sammamish to his new place of work and home again. In 2023, when the light rail begins to operate in Redmond, the 269 will take him to Redmond and he'll be able to catch the train. I ask you to please keep public transport foremost in your minds as you discuss the city's future plans. Not all of us drive a car, not all of us will ever be able to drive our own car, but are, uh, but are otherwise able to lead fulfilling and happy lives. As much as this community has given Kian, he has also given back by volunteering to our local library and the Sammamish YMCA and just completed an internship with the Issaquah Rotary. He loves his basketball and has recently started playing basketball with Special Olympics. I encourage all of you, if you ever get a chance to go to a Special Olympics basketball game, please go. It is beyond exciting. In closing, please remember all of the members of our city who need your support through initiatives and policies that you approve to help them lead an inclusive and productive life. Thank you. Thank you. Rasheen, congratulations on your son getting that job. That's fabulous Thank news. You. We're very, very excited. And I'd also like to just um, ask a question around this. Um, has, he, has he practiced taking the bus and is he finding? Oh, yeah. Yep, so oh, he's yeah. got it wired. I'm exactly. wondering if like Council Metro Howell. have a program where they will take special needs um, people we got onto the on bus and teach questions. them how to ride the bus independently, and they will show them how to do that. So, but I did that with him when he was probably 14. We used to go to Seattle all the time, 
in and out. We took the 558 in and out. So he was well able to take the bus and was excited about the prospect of the train as well. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Madam City Clerk, do we have anyone else? Yes, we have two, two more callers. Thank you. Paul, Paul Stickney. Hello, City Council. Paul Stickney, Sammamish here. My comment tonight is tied to several comments I've made over the last year or so, but it does tie with many of your agenda topics tonight. So let's talk about six words, alleviating Im, Im balances, I'll spit out the B, add assets with appropriate um, uh, benefits. What is the primary Sammamish ailment to remedy? Misdevelopment of housing services and transportation. King County allowed about 85% of the homes in our community. We've enabled the other 15%, mostly large single family housing. But what's needed now is to plan for optimal housing supplies based on housing needs of those living and or working in Sammamish over their cycle of life. How do you optimize housing supplies? Get sufficient information and contrast consequences of over 40 major topics between our current comprehensive plan, council actions over the last four years, and optimal housing alternatives. What's at stake? Enabling additional assets for the community with appropriate uh, benefits far greater for our residents and city than for development interests. Let's zero in on a couple of tonight's topics, the community vision and the growth target and the, um, you know, Bluma EIS. Our growth target has two other major errors besides the sewer capacity to be corrected. It erroneously counted down over 1,000 housing units that we didn't build from 2006 to 19. And, it, and even more importantly, it does not contemplate internal housing needs within our community analyzed over a cycle of life. The EIS has a couple of major errors also. Use of the erroneous growth target numbers as part of its foundations, but even more important, focusing on arbitrary volume over capacity rather than focusing on the main congestion in Sammamish, which is school pickup and drop off times. Suggest making those alt alterations to rectify these errors. Our proposed community vision has been reformatted in a new way. There's a simple North Star sentence and then contexting statements. What's missing? Optimal housing supplies as part of the North Star sentence. 15 Why seconds. To serve lifetime housing needs for our residents and enable holistic, added, sustainable community enrichments. Implore you as the council to consider making these directional changes to our community vision and the Bluma EIS and the growth target. It's gonna be a long meeting. And thanks for the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you. We have one additional caller. Pam Stewart. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and City Council. Thank you for this opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, as you begin discussions on the uh, critical uh, visioning statement for our community, please, please, please take into consideration sustainability. Uh, I know there's mention of natural resources, but that's not the same as living sustainably. We could have all the trees in the world, and as long as we're all driving around, you know, by ourselves in large SUVs uh, and living in large houses, burning fossil fuels, we're not living sustainably. And those trees will never sequester all the carbon that we produce. So I think it's critical that we incorporate that um, 
in 2022, as we start to see the effects, the ravaging effects of climate change, not only on our community, but on other communities around the country and around the world, it's incumbent upon every person on this planet that we do everything we can to not create our own extinction event. We would become the first species in history to ever create our own extinction event. Um, and if that's not enough to scare you, which is not meant to be fearful, we owe it to our children. Uh, if any of you, if any of us were scouts, we know that one of their mottos is that we should leave this place as good or better than we found it. Uh, and as a generation, we are not on track to doing that. We must, must, must do more to become carbon neutral and even carbon negative. So please consider that. Um, and as part of that, uh, as we look to the work ahead and we look at the work plan ahead, uh, if we, you know, if we didn't want to create uh, or work on public transit as a means to reduce traffic, um, you heard a, an incredibly compelling uh, personal story this evening from Roshino Farrell and her son. Uh, and there are many in our community, whether it be uh, people who may be aging and not comfortable with driving, whether it be people with other challenges, or uh, for those of you who have young children, many teens uh, today are not getting their licenses as soon as they turn 16. So there are many people where transit is so critical. And if we really give transit a shot, if we really look at transit, I think it can be a triple, triple threat win. It can help us with our sustainability. It can help us with our traffic. It can help us, actually it's quadruple. It can help us be more inclusive and it will likely cost less than when you look at the, the cost per person of having to create more roads and infrastructure and people owning cars. So please, I beg of you, uh, consider sustainability in our vision statement and let's prioritize public transit. It is such a critical element to sustainability. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wanted to give public comment, Madam City Clerk? Uh, that concludes public comment. Thank you. So council next item we have is the interviews for the finalists for the council vacancy. Um, Madam city clerk, do you have them kind of all queued up? Okay, wonderful. And do you, is the idea to go in the order to which they appear on the agenda or that is going to be up to council. So Council, I guess the first thing that we need to tackle is whether or not we want to interview everyone. There are three candidates here we have already interviewed, so um, we can choose to or not to interview them again. Do we need to motion? Uh, you could make a motion something, but you have to phrase it in the affirmative. So you wouldn't make a motion to not interview people. <laughs> you would make a motion to interview certain people. I move to interview the five new people who have not been interviewed yet. I'll second that. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Deputy Mayor Clark, did you wanna to speak to your motion? No. Is there any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, by a vote of 6-0, we will skip Mr. Norman, Ms. Stewart, and Ms. O'Farrell. So it looks like we will kick things off with Mr. Amato, if he is queued up for the interview. And Council, while she's pulling up Mr. Amato, there were the questions that were asked in advance. So if a council member wants to, uh, maybe we just have each council member read those questions to each. Um, and Deputy Mayor Clark, if I could ask you to kick that off with Mr. Amato, um, I can help fire off those questions to you if you need them. I got them, it's Did the Lita send three. send questions? Yeah, Lita sent an email. On three eight, okay, at eight thirty p.m. All right, 
Okay, thank you, Josh. Um, so first question, what were your reasons for, well, <laughs> you did run for city council on the ballot last year. Um, how about some reasons you did run for last year uh, for the ballot? Sure, I can give those. Um, I ran for city council, believed, uh, because I believe that I could make a difference and I'm seeking this appointment for that same reason. Um, I had six focus areas for my campaign. One was ending unsustainable growth, which included ending the practices of overbuilding on small lots and investing in services to adequately, adequately support the growth that we're going to get. Um, increasing public safety. So that includes um, following recommendations within the police services study, utilizing technology more, um, adding a mental health co-responder um, on, on calls that need them. Um, and also disaster preparedness. So uh, wildfire and earthquake come to mind as the top there. Um, improving infrastructure was another one. So by that, I mean investing in choke points or fixing choke points, ensuring roads are properly maintained, increasing connectivity and improving pedestrian and bike safety. Um, addressing youth mental health was another big issue for me. Um, and by that, I meant um, increasing and equalizing mental health support among our school districts and providing additional um, services for our youth. Uh, I want to generally increase human services in Sammamish. Um, we have a greater need than our budget allows. And um, I proposed um, copying the city of Mercer Island's thrift shop, which brings in um, about a million dollars in revenue to their Department of Youth and Family Services. I thought Sammamish could um, replicate that. And then I wanted to add services for seniors, and I'm happy to see that uh, the council has added a community center or a senior center to priorities for this year. So, Great, thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, how will you balance development and infrastructure needs of our community? Okay, so um, when I was talking to voters during my campaign, um, growth and traffic, or infrastructure I heard time and time again, but um, everyone had a different idea about what that meant to them. Um, for me, I recognize that Sammamish is going to continue to grow and I know people will be unhappy about that, but um, every community goes through challenges like this. Um, while I think our geography makes us a little bit unique, I think we need to plan for that uh, growth uh, responsibly. I think we need to have development regulations and maybe design re uh, regulations that result in um, outcomes our residents can live with or be happy with, and then make sure we actually follow that code that we adopt. Um, we've done some of that work with development regulation updates. Um, phase two was just passed this year by the council. Um, and as much as possible, I think we need to partner with the school districts to in increase capacity because they're struggling right now, they're going to struggle into the future. And as much as we can be a partner with them to help them do that, I think we should. And I think we also need to invest in our roads to improve motorized and non-motorized travel. And in addition to that, in -store storm, ensure stormwater is properly uh, managed. We can see the unintended consequences of that um, in, in many areas of our city, especially since we have so many hills and steep slopes, so. All right, thank you. Uh, last standard question. Uh, what is your personal vision and timeline for a community hub or town center? Include as much detail as, as you can, including housing mix, commercial considerations, and transportation options. Okay, um, well, I don't have a timeline in mind. I think that um, it will arrive as fast as the market will allow it to. Um, and my vision, I guess we'd have to go back in time um, to when King County was essentially ha hazardly approving development uh, in Sammamish and ask them to think things through a little bit more. Right now, we're trying to deal with what a situation they created as best as we can. Um, so in my mind, you know, without a lot of study, I would think that uh, had the Sammamish Highlands Shopping Center not been surrounded by residential, that would be a good place to have a town center. It's at the bottom of a hill, 228th and Inglewood Hill Road make for good access for mass transit. Um, so I think that would be a good place, but we have to work with what we have. Um, and I think there's been lots of promises made um, or individual visions about what the town center will or should be. And I'm not convinced at this point that the visions people have of cool new restaurants or mom and pop stores will bear out as much as I want them to, because um, I'm not sure or I'm not convinced yet that the economics are there. 
Without a major employment center, lunch and happy hour traffic is limited and restaurants have to survive on dinner service. Um, that's why pizza and takeout, carryouts are abundant here. They can survive on dinner service. Um, the vision of the town center also doesn't have a big box store in there. In fact, it asks for it not to be there, which is great. I know that our residents don't want it, but without a an anchor tenant or a chain store for people to go to that kind of chain their errands to, um, with the north and south parts of town being so close to Redmond and Issaquah, I think people will continue to drive off the plateau to get to the big box retailers. And of course, e-commerce kind of threw a wrench in the whole um, shopping local. Um, I, but I don't want to be a downer um, on all of this. I think that uh, the town center businesses will end up being whatever the market can support. Um, city council will have very limited say in what that looks like. So we're just going to have to see what comes in. For residential, outside of mandatory affordable units, we're very limited on what we can do to make housing affordable. Developers are gonna make, build whatever they can, uh, make the most money on with the least risk, which is why we've seen some of the housing that uh, we've seen in Sammamish in recent years. Um, and there's no shortage of people who can spend a million bucks on a townhome. So uh, supply and demand is really driving that. I think one of the things we need to do is decrease the size of the units because if people are paying for less square footage, housing prices go down. Uh, or they'll be paying less. And that's one thing I've proud of them. One thing I've proud of them on the planning commission is the floor to area ratio, which decreases the total size of, of single family homes, which I think will kind of help fill that missing middle a little bit. And then for transportation, I think we need to continue to lobby Sound Transit and Metro to provide more service um, and continue to push the legislature to allow um, some businesses to use park and rides the goal, one of the main goals is to take cars off the road and with Microsoft, Amazon and T-Mobile offering those shuttle services, filling the gaps that uh, mass transit isn't right now, um, we should support them as much as possible. All right, that's it for standardized. Should I move on to individual? Yes, so Deputy Mayor, if you wanna ask your individual question and then we'll go around. Yeah, um, so Josh, you know, being on the planning commission, I would like to know what kind of work you would leave unfinished if you were to get this vacancy. So right now, um, it's the comp plan is the major item on our agenda. And I know there's school concurrency coming down. We've got um, a work plan that's set by council. So there's quite a few items of, of importance coming down. Um, we've got some really good commissioners on board and I know that you'll be looking to bring in a new one with a recent uh, vacancy, but um, yeah, that's that's what I'll be leaving um, behind. Great, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Moran. Josh, um, I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch any of the um, workshop that we had, the retreat that we had, but had you been able to partake, what would have been um, what you would have put forward to have been on the work plan? That's a tough question. Um, I, I did get through half that day where you talked about work plan items. So uh, the town, uh, the, uh, the senior center would have definitely been one of the items on my list. And um, I think, it, and it would have been a mix between either finding sustainable transportation funding or stormwater management. Um, those would have been the two on my list. I kind of looked towards basic government service first as my, the way I kind of view, view that. So that's, I think, where it would have landed. Okay, thank you. Council member Howe. Hi, Josh. Uh, thank you for your service on the Planning Commission. We appreciate your work. And actually, my question is going to revolve around commissions to a certain extent. What I would love to know is how could we make them better, and what are your thoughts on the commission? Do you think that the commission should just do whatever the council tells them, or do you think that they should be primary researchers that are able to deliver results back to council? Do you think there should be term limits on commissions? How would you improve it? What are your thoughts? Okay, so I can only speak to the Planning Commission because that's the only one I've served on. Um, 
I don't think that it serves the council best to just have a bunch of yes people on the commission. I think that um, they should be willing to put forward ideas and disagree. I don't think that we should be watching for what the council thinks and then trying to mirror that on the commission. Um, I think it's critical that we're independent researchers. Um, the lens I look through or when I'm taking a vote, I've reiterated a couple times during council meeting or at commission meetings is, can I defend or explain the vote I'm taking to a council member when I'm asked? And if the answer is no, then I either didn't do my homework or I didn't get enough information to make an informed decision. Um, as far as term limits go, the answer is maybe um, we, we have some, We've had on the planning commission, for example, Mark Boffin was just reappointed and um, we've had a lot of turnover in the commission recently and he brings a lot of historical perspective and he is, I think, a very good leader for the commission. And it would have been a big loss if he wasn't reappointed. So, um, but I also think it's extremely valuable to have um, new and different perspectives brought forward. Um, that is critical for people to have uh, a chance to, to speak up and it, it's a volunteer position. So people shouldn't look at it as like a lifetime appointment either, so. Thank you. Council Member Lamb. Hey Josh. Hello. So diversity, equity and inclusion will be a priority for the city this year. What can you, cite some specific examples of DEI practices that you would like to implement if you were on council? Yeah, so this is, um, to, to be pretty frank, this is an, an area that I don't have a ton of experience in and I don't wanna come off as a white savior and speak from you know an area of, of authority on something I you know admittedly have a lot of learning to do on. I know um, the, the best thing that someone like me can do is, is listen, get out of the way and take down any barriers that exist that I have the capacity to take down. Um, I'm by no means a DEI expert and I think it's important that the council were to bring in a consultant who could really guide that discussion. I know um, in my work, for my small business, one of our verticals is uh, uh, local elections. And we've you know, worked with quite a few candidates and elected quite a few candidates who are not part of majority culture. And I can see the change that happens when someone who is not gets elected, whether it's the appointment of, you know, in the, in the case of like a sheriff or prosecutor, the appointment of directors or under sheriffs who, uh, you know, fit the community better and can serve the community better or differently. Um, so I don't know if that entirely answers your question, but um, that's, uh, I think that's about as good as I can get at this point with, with my understanding. Thank you. Council Member Train. Uh, Josh, what's your experience or Tell us a little bit about your knowledge of uh, budgets and finances. Well, so um, I run a small business, so I have to make payroll and and monitor um, our finances and budgets and cash flow and all of that on a, on a business level. It's definitely not the same as um, government accounting or, or government budgets. I've followed the city budget very close over the last couple of years. I worked um, on the 12th floor at the King County Council. So I followed that budget process. Um, I followed the state legislative budget process. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly familiar with, you know, government budgeting. Um, I've never put pen to paper and written a, a government budget, but I've definitely watched it and looked at priorities and understand, you know, how property taxes work. And I've looked at different tax funding mechanisms, whether it's a car tab fee or REITs and, and, and things like that. So um, is are there specifics you're looking for or? Thank you very much. That's perfect. Thanks, Josh. Yep. So Josh, um, I'm curious, 
If there are any changes you would make to our currently adopted town center plan, and if so, what? Yeah, that's, um, I guess, you know, looking at the hearings examiner um, finding, and this was during the campaign, so I didn't have a ton of extra time to go and read long documents or, or watch that, but had, you know, the city previously followed the town center code, I think we'd be in a much better spot than we are today. So one thing I'd like to go back and change is ensuring we actually follow what's written down. Um, but secondarily, I think, um, you know, making very clear, I think there were some challenges with the infrastructure plan related to, um, I think it was like uh, size of roads for fire engine turnarounds, um, if I'm remembering that correctly. And then I would also look to make sure that, um, you know, the townhomes that are being built end up being sized appropriately for, for what we're looking at filling um, for affordability. Right. It might not be, you know, quote, affordable by the legal sense, but it would be definitely be more affordable for people if they weren't so large. So um, there'd be, a, you know, there's plenty of ways to nibble around the edges on it, but those are the big things. Great. Thanks, Josh. I think that wraps up all of our questions for you. So I um, appreciate you being here this evening. And um, I think our city clerk if she has half a second, because <laughs> she's assisting the deputy mayor with a uh, power issue here. Um, thank you very much. We'll pull the next one up. So thank you so much, Josh. Yes, so that would be, Melanie Kelsey would be our next person. And Karen Moran, who is not on camera anymore. Did we lose Karen? No, I'm here. Okay, if you can keep your camera on, we're gonna have you ask the questions of uh, Melanie Kelsey. Okay. Thank you. Do we have Melanie? No. Oh, there she comes. Okay. Yep, I'm here. Okay, thanks for being with us, Melanie. I'm going to have uh, Councilmember Moran ask questions of you this evening. Okay. Well, welcome, Melanie. It's good to see you. Good to see you guys. Um, okay, I've got just some simple questions. Yep. Okay, first one. What were your reasons for, and I'm going to go with running, what were your reasons for running for city council on the ballot last year? And and then I'll, I'll ask a question after that. But. Um, well, I ran for city council last year because I felt um, that my finance and budgeting skills were were skills that could be needed on the, the council and, and were very useful. Um, I have worked in budget offices for, for local governments and, and for private industry. So I had a lot of those skills. And I also wanted to run for, um, I ran on a platform um, kind of um, maintaining and improving open space and environmental conservation and also slowing the growth um, and development to allow our infrastructure to, to catch up. So, and I got asked to run. Great. Okay, so the next question, how would you balance development and infrastructure needs in our community? Um, I believe if development needs to be better managed and not completed until the infrastructure can catch up. Uh, we need to fix our already failing roads before we add even more volume. Our current residents should not have to put up with increased traffic and a diminished quality of life just so developers can get rich. I would, I would defer to, to our infrastructure and then let it catch up and move on to development. Great. And then the last question is what is your personal vision and timeline for community hub or town center? Include as much detail as you can, including housing mix, commercial considerations, and transportation options. Um, I, uh, to answer this question, I'm gonna expand on something that I said um, in a blog post during the campaign. And I don't really have, have a timeline. I think that that's kind of, 
it, it's kind of up in the air. But to me, my personal vision, whether it's, you know, what everyone else wants, my personal vision, because that is the question, um, it should, to me, it should be a true gathering place for the entire community that residents want. It should have some local shops and restaurants, a community teen senior center complex. I see this as being a place where each independent group, so teens and seniors could have their, their own separate location and then everyone could come together and, and share their life experiences in, in kind of a kind of a you know community college complex sort of thing. And then a large or large outdoor gathering spot for concerts, outdoor movies, and other passive recreation. It should preserve our environment and not add to our traffic, overcrowded schools, or stormwater issues. We've already seen the negative impacts of flooding on the creeks, downhill properties, and the kokanee runs. We don't need to add to those problems by clear cutting and plopping a few thousand dwellings on top of it all, especially when the stormwater plan doesn't adequately address on-site retention. And it should not negatively impact our aquifer, Cara, or George Davis and Ebright Creeks. And it should only have housing options after we adopt a V over C traffic policy and transportation CIP that ensures that the additional traffic is mitigated before the housing units are added. These housing units should also only come after Lake Washington School District assures our residents that they will be able to handle the increased students without busing them off the plateau. Okay, and then um, I'm going to start with my first question that I have for you. Mm -hmm. And that is. Um, since the end of your campaign to now, which isn't very long, but since then, have you changed your thought process as you've taken information? Have you changed any stances or anything on anything that you, um, from campaign to now? I have not. Is I mean, is that yeah? I have I have not changed my opinions on on anything related to to the city. Is there a specific topic that? No, I'm you're just, concerned about sometimes as you get more information or you know something happens and things change and we were in COVID and now we're out and I just wondered if you had changed your opinion on anything no the only thing I've changed my opinion recently is I'm gonna work from home 100 percent so oh good for you okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right thank you and um, I'll turn you over to I don't know who so I, I've got the I've got the list I'm just running in order uh, so Deputy Mayor Clark all right, thank you, Melanie. Um, so uh, when we did our first round of interviews, you sent in a public comment for Josh Amato, um, mm -hmm. quoting, since diversity was a huge cornerstone of the campaigns of a few of you, appointing him will maintain gender diversity on the council. So I really wanna ask um, what diversity means to you and kind of how that has morphed into you now applying. Um, well, diversity to me, and I, I I mean, actually, I still think, I still, I still think the same thing I thought. I mean, I think you should, I think we should maintain diversity on the council, and that may not be me. So I, I'll be quite honest, because to me, diversity means diversity of thought, of of ethnicity, of gender, of thought, of of of, of well, I should say thoughts or opinions. Um, of way of thinking, so kind of left brain versus right brain, um, introvert versus extrovert, um, age, um, life experiences. I mean, to me, to me, diversity is not just gender or it's not just ethnicity. It's the the combination of what people completely, what what the whole package is, and what it what a person brings. To, to life. I mean, I'm, I'm diverse in the fact that I'm an only child. Around here, I'm diverse in the fact that I'm a Washington native. I've grown up here. Um, I'm diverse in the fact that, I mean, I am a diverse in the fact that I'm a woman. I'm not diverse in my ethnicity. I'm, you know, I'm not diverse in, in my, my sexual orientation. I'm not, you know, there's a lot of things I'm, I'm totally not diverse in. But I don't, to me, it's not just gender and it's not just ethnicity. It's, it's what is the whole pick, the whole person bring. And, and when the first round, yes, I, I mean, and I still do feel you're, you're replacing a man and, and the, the diversity and thought that, that 
a, a man, a male could bring to it with, you know, with another, that's, that's my opinion. It's that, that to me is maintaining some of that diversity. Great. Thank you. Councilmember Howe. Hi, Melanie. Thank you for your service on the Parks um, Commission, and I hope you're enjoying it. I um, am. They're good. There's some great people there. Uh, my question is maybe a little different in that um, I'm not going to ask the really bizarre questions that Microsoft used to ask, like how many gas stations are there in the United States, and what they cared about was your thought process and just how did you work the problem. But in a way, it's a little bit like that. So my question is, how do we build... $3 million in sustainable year-over-year um, -year revenue that we don't have today. What's a new revenue source? How would you direct it? See, part of what I want to get to is the creativity aspect. You're talking right brain, left brain. Um, this is where I'm asking the accountant in you to, to take a nap and to have the creative part come out and say, okay, so... I'm just creative asking side you. of me that is is I, I'm not I'm not diverse in creativity. That is, that is definitely not. I'm I am I'm I'm a I'm a bullet list kind of person. Um, but I mean to me, it, it's a hard question. It's it's a very it's it's a yeah. question that deserves a really large whiteboard and. I almost want to say throw darts on a wall because we in Sammamish are are very limited in the revenue we can conceivably do with without taxes because we don't have big box stores we don't have big businesses we don't have hotels we don't have I mean we, we don't have a lot of those things that could supplement it but I mean there, there's probably grants that we haven't considered. There's probably, and and I and I can't say you know grant writing isn't my isn't something I'm specialty in. But I'm I'm sure you know there's grants for almost everything nowadays. I, I'm sure there's probably stuff that we haven't looked at. But you know, to me on on the side, I don't I don't think it should be a revenue only discussion. I think I think you have to look at the whole picture. You have to look at the expenses and the revenue at the same time. You can't you can't talk about increasing the revenue without saying we're going to increase it because of this. We we need to pay we want to pay for this park or we want to pay for this um, and or you say, you know, we're coming back to you because we need this revenue, but here's what we did to reduce our expenses or here's what we did to to tighten the belt, I guess you could say. So to me it's not it's not an either or conversation. You have to look at the whole the whole pie together. But yeah, creativity is not my strong suit. But you know, again, for the diversity, it's it shouldn't be a decision of one person. You should get a whole bunch of people in the room and say, okay, let's let's just sky's the limit. What do you, what could we do if 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 we could do anything? What could we do? You know, and and go from there. No, oh, that's great. Thank you very much. Councilmember Lamb. Hi, Melanie. Hello. So you just mentioned that your views haven't changed since the election. And if I recall correctly, on your election website, you stated that you did not support affordable housing in Sammamish, that it belonged in another city. So could you enlighten us and the public on what you meant by that? I can actually read you from my website what I said. Um, and I said, based on AMI, affordable housing in Sammamish isn't actually affordable for the average non-tech worker. I still agree with that. I actually live in what is technically affordable housing, and I'm a tech worker. Um, per Washington State guidelines, affordable housing should be centered around mass transit and job availability, neither of which apply in Sammamish. We should be contributing our fair share to facilitate more affordable housing, for example, working closely with ARCH in areas where it does work, rather than trying to put it up here on the plateau where it doesn't work. So yes, I, I still believe that exact same thing. We should be we should be putting, we should be supporting ARCH, fully supporting ARCH. I, 
I am very glad it's on the agenda for later today. I read, I, I read, I won't say I read word for word. I do have to read it again to, to remember a thing, but I, I read through the work plan that's there and I would actually see, like to see more finances to see if what's being contributed is the right amount or if we should do more. But that's where we should be putting our money and not putting it up in Sammamish where there's no mass transit and there's no big job availability. So I, I believe the same thing. Okay, thank you. Council Member Treen. Um, what do you see as the number one challenge then for Sammamish? Well, I think the number one challenge, and, and I, it's, I would have to say I take it off of the, the work plan, the priorities that, that's also going to be discussed later today. And, and to me, it's financial sustainability that we've already talked about. I mean, if we, if we can't sustain our finances, we can't do everything else that's on the list. So to, to me, that's, that's the most important thing, followed Thanks. then by, you know, for me, environment and, and open space conservation. Financial sustainability, and I do, I do like the second priority of the senior programming because we do need that. But financial sustainability, or nothing gets done. Thank you. So, Melanie, I have the final question. Um, you mentioned in your application to us that housing is a quote basic right. What does that look like? And how does that marry up with the managed growth that you campaigned on and spoke about tonight? Well, I do think uh, housing is a basic right for people. It, I mean, it doesn't have to be, it, it doesn't have to be in any specific area, but yes, housing, having housing is a basic right, but making sure that your housing also comes with a quality of life that goes with it is also in my mind a basic right. And that quality of life involves the ability to not sit in traffic and to have your infrastructure that goes along with your, your housing. So, so yes, housing is a, basic, is a basic right for people. Whether we can give it to every, whether every city can give it to every person in exactly the way everyone thinks it should be, that, that's a trade-off. That's a, a decision that has to be made. Okay. Well Thank you. I think that concludes all of our questions. So appreciate you, you attending this evening. Thank you. So Madam City Clerk, I think we're moving to Rom next. So council member, how are you gonna be able to ask the questions? Okay. Good evening. Good evening, Ram, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you very much. Great. So I'm gonna have council member Howe um, ask, start off by asking the um, standardized questions and then her own question. Excellent. Good evening, Rob. So I will kick you off with, what were your reasons for not running for city council on the ballot last year? All right. Well, first of all, uh, I want to thank, uh, thank you all for giving me this opportunity to have a discussion or response to the questions. Um, you know, I've been a <clears throat> city of Sammamish resident for over 16 years. And, um, Many things have changed over the last few years uh, that, uh, that made me, that gave me the time to consider this. Running for city council was not in my priority list uh, you know, until now. And uh, uh, however, when I came to know of the open position, I felt that I could be of uh, value to fulfill the commitments based on the changes in fa my family needs. Additionally, there are three reasons I put my name in the hat. First, I live in the part of the Sammamish, the southeast part of Sammamish, and I believe there is no one representing our area. 
Second, that I think that I can bring a perspective to the city council that will serve our city better on the demographics of our city. Third, I believe that my experiences and expertise also will bring a fresh perspective to the growth and sustainability of our city to accommodate what I believe to be changing needs. And uh, there are, you know, there are many experiences that I've had, not only as an entrepreneur, but also as a community uh, uh, member and uh, uh, which be, who believe in community service, you know, in addition to uh, being um, an entrepreneur, I, I'm a member of Sammamish Rotary Club and I serve on the Snoqualmie Valley City, uh, Snoqualmie Valley uh, <clears throat> Board. Um, uh, and uh, I also serve on the board of Harvest Against Hunger that uh, addresses hunger relief and food wastage. So there are multiple reasons where I felt that I had, uh, you know, uh, a different perspective to bring to the table. Thank you. How will you balance development and infrastructure needs of our community? Well, uh, I believe that, you know, I cannot get into the details because I don't know. I have not gotten into the um, nitty gritty of it. But at the same time, uh, I believe that uh, there are things we can control and there are things that we cannot control. If we focus on the things that we can control and focus on how we can support our community through intelligent growth that addresses specifically the quality of life that everybody believes that we should have and preserve, environmental sustainability is also a key part of it and the best use of resources we have. So it's a balancing act. And I have to learn a lot, but I'm a quick study, but I would like to understand more about these needs, requirements, and possibilities in order to preserve the quality of life we live, we love. Um, I also believe that when we come together, are open to open, are open to ideas and use our intelligence and experiences, we can be innovative in addressing our needs. And as a tech entrepreneur, uh, you know, we believe that there is only one constant and that is change. So however, how, however we look at, uh, at solving problems, we have to be innovative. And, uh, and then I can assure you that I will listen, collaborate, uh, challenge everyone to think outside the box and support our communities in ways that will not only surprise them, but delight them. What is your personal vision and timeline for a community hub or town center? Include as much detail as you can, including a housing mix, commercial considerations, and transportation options. Wow, that's a loaded uh, question. And uh, I say that because without getting deep in the topic or really uh, digging into the uh, transportation challenges or the town hall and growth, it's very difficult to answer a question uh, with clarity. Uh, I do understand that there are compliance issues. However, I would like to learn more, consult with experts, collaborate with council members, our community administrators to reach a consensus. That is my fundamental way of looking at it. I would, however, like to share that, I, uh, that what I believe are there are many options to consider. There are many ways to uh, solve a problem. And I'll give you an example. When the pandemic started, our main street businesses were shut down for many reasons uh, that we all know. And in this day and age of smartphones and search engines and digital transformation, even with that, our local businesses really suffered. So in the late middle to late uh, 2020, we used our experiences and expertise and partnered with city of Kirkland to create a digital twin of main street that provided actually a equal playing field for all the local businesses so that they can be found online and still do business with residents in Kirkland. It was a very innovative program that benefited hundreds of businesses and created equity for them. The leaders of the city of Kirkland were really innovative, courageous, and collaborated with many stakeholders to support their business and their residents. That was out of the box thinking. So I do understand that we have an obligation to serve our community and also the obligation to support our city. 
county and state in ever-changing world we live. Whatever path we take, it needs to be equitable, comprehensive, and strategic. And our focus should be to improve the lives of everyone who calls uh, Sammamish their home and provide the services and yet create an environment for our residents to thrive, uh, including the youth, parents, seniors, and our businesses. Okay, thank you. That's the, the end of our standard questions. Now I'm gonna ask you my question. Sure. So thank you for your service on the Stoquamie School Board. I would like to know about something that you worked on for the, with the school board that failed, did not succeed, that floundered and flopped over. <laughs> I want to know what I happened. I want to know what you did about it. And I want to know what you learned about it. I'm trying, going back. I mean, the, I, mean I, I started serving in 2020. So the, the biggest change during those two years was the pandemic. And uh, the, the challenge, I, yeah, now I'll come. The challenge was uh, how do we keep our classrooms and our uh, facilities, uh, you know, clean and, uh, and support the whole, you know, cleanliness part of it so that the students and teachers and staff can come back. And we did have an issue where we had to really get uh, services on the fly. And that was outside of the you know, standard budget approval process. So that, that is what the challenge was. Uh, it was not a flounder or you know, a failure, but at the same time, it was an urgent need that had to be addressed. So it was, so I mean, the school board has to come together and collaborate at the end of the day. And that's what we did. And we basically, you know, spend the right time, right place, and the you know way to support our administrators to make those calls so that they can uh, serve the you know our, our uh, you know students and the staff better. Thank you, Councilmember Lamb. So my question is um, addressing climate change takes collective and personal effort. What are you doing in your life to reduce your carbon footprint? <laughs> you asked me a question that I'm very passionate about. <laughs> so you can ask my family about how, how do we conserve energy and uh, create a better uh, you know, opportunities for us to you know, sustain our environment. Um, I actually, um, uh, uh, you know, the PA, uh, Puget Sound Energy sends the report about energy consumption uh, based on your neighborhood or the similar homes. And we are always on the bottom, you know, the best of the class that we can be. So, of course, uh, there are other things to consider uh, when it comes to carbon footprint, in, in not only energy use, but also the things that you consume and uh, the transportation that you use and how do you educate. Uh, and uh, I believe in hydroponics, so I have a little hydroponics, so I do grow my own little, uh, you know, greens and things like that. So that are, there are multiple variants of looking at, uh, levels of looking at how do you contribute to the carbon footprint and what are the things that you can do to, you know, reduce your carbon footprint. So one other thing is education. So I, I do have a lot of, you know, I do spend a lot of time learning about it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Treen. Yeah, in, uh, in your opinion, what, what are uh, the changing needs of Sammamish? Wow. <clears throat> well, I mean, some of them, th thanks for asking that question. Some of, the thing, some of the things are very, I think, easy to see, I think. Population growth, housing prices, uh, and of course, congestion, uh, and of course, the preser preserving our environment. All these things are, of course, going to be part of uh, a changing world. And uh, on top of that, um, you know, there is regulations that come from not only from the county but the state and the, the nation. So we, that, those are the, those are also forcing us to make changes and adapt. 
Does that answer uh, the question that you? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Ram. Uh, do you think Sammamish should stay a bedroom community, which has us forego an economic development chapter of our comp plan? And if not, why? <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. I did not prepare for that, to answer that, specifically that question, right? But I love where, I, uh, where, where we live, you know, as a bedroom community. However, there is a lot of other things to consider also. And um, the, I've heard many comments about building, bringing um, jobs to Sammamish. Uh, I feel that there are many ways of looking at it. It doesn't have to be one way of solving traditionally. Um, for example, you know, I'm a technology entrepreneur, so I, I always go back to uh, leveraging technology as a way to uh, see how we can leverage and create solutions. Um, the other day I was talking to somebody and I said, hey, if you want to find a babysitter or a pet sitter or a tutor or a plumber in Sammamish, how do you go about it? And there are over 4,000 businesses in Sammamish who, you know, there are, and there is no way for us to find them even with Google searches and things like that. So imagine that if we are able to surface those businesses for our residents, then it becomes, it can become a bedroom community yet grow in revenues because we are increasing the average, you know, uh, what do you call revenues for our local businesses that also adds jobs. So that is how I keep thinking about it. Let's not just go with what traditional ways of uh, solving a problem, how can we be innovative and think outside the box? It's just an example. Great, uh, Deputy Mayor Clark. Hello, Ram. Uh, so my question is, uh, how can we, as the city of Sammamish, improve our relationships with the school boards and school districts? <laughs> Great, thank you. I mean, since I have a little bit on the other side of experience, I can. I would definitely talk about it because we actually started um, meeting with uh, the council members and the administrators of North Bend, Snoqualmie, and Fall City, basically because the growth will happen. Uh, you know, as as whatever path we take, the growth will happen, and every uh, with growth we'll have more kids. Even without the growth, even currently, the uh, the school districts capacity, the, uh, what do you call the infrastructure is very limited. So how do we go about this process? And that is the only way is to collaborate with them to understand what their needs are, what their projections are for growth of uh, their school system, what uh, facilities they have, where are they lacking? And um, like uh, we did in Sukwami Valley School District, there was a bond that was passed five years ago, and we built a brand new high school uh, with a performing arts center. That will solve at least the high school uh, issue for the next 10 years. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot predict beyond that one to collect, you know, to raise the money. So there are, I think, more than uh, money, it's more about relationships with the council uh, and the board members and the superintendent to collaborate truly to understand a short-term and a long-term solution uh, that benefits all the students. Thank you. Councilmember Moran. Well, welcome, Ron, and thank you for work, all your work on the school board. Thank you. Um, you've been on the school board since 2020, or were you reelected in 2020? I was elected, not re-elected, ah, just elected. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so um, one of the questions I have then is if um, if you were considered and you were gonna be pulled to the city council, what would we be taking you away from on the school board? What are you? What is the school board working on right now? Well, I know the major part of school board that uh, that was on our, uh, on our table to work was the uh, levy, which just passed. So that's a big part of it because that gives us financial security for the next four years. 
Um, uh, there are normal things that happen, but again, the most part of it is the uh, pandemic and how do we come out of pandemic, uh, address the learning losses that we, uh, you know, we identify and how do we move forward with the right um, ecosystem of uh, not only the teacher uh, and uh, paraeducators, but also the other programs or so sports or other uh, clubs and things like that. So. Uh, well, right now, there are nothing like a burning hot uh, topic that we have. Uh, however, you never know. It, life happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've worked so, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> for now, yeah, for now, I think, and the, the best part is our board is so collaborative um, that uh, uh, we bring different perspectives, yet we understand that the main focus we are, why we are there is to serve the student body. And how that is our primary focus, no matter what comes to our uh, plate, as long as that is the you know, front and center, I think that we are in good shape. So our board really works very closely. We have not had any issues because we respect each other so very closely and then, you know, so I don't see any major issues that, that I foresee for now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ram, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for listening to me and I appreciate uh, all of your work at the city. Thank you, have a good evening. Thank you. So Madam City Clerk, I think the final interview is Samuel Rodeba. Oh, oh, you're right, sorry. But the next one would be Samuel Rodeva. Welcome, Mr. Rodeva. Appreciate your time here this evening. Um, I'm going to have Council Member Lamb ask you those standard questions that you were provided, and then we'll each go around and ask an individual question as well. So, Council Member Lamb. Hi, Hi, good evening. So, the first question is What were your reasons for not running for City Council on the ballot last year? Yeah, uh, there are really two reasons. Um, the first is that uh, I have uh, an admittedly unique professional consideration when it comes to serving on the council. So for the last 17 years after graduating from law school, I've been a real estate land use and environmental attorney. And that means for 17 years, uh, I have represented clients with dealings in, with the city. Uh, sometimes clients with uh, positions aligned with the city, sometimes those adverse to the city. And so at any given time, um, you know, professionally, if I were to get on the council, it means that ethically uh, I need to withdraw from representation of those clients, ensure that they have new legal counsel, and then recuse myself, of course, if any matter for that client came before uh, the council. Um, that was not possible at the time I had to determine whether to run last year. Since then, I have winnowed my representation of those clients down to uh, just two uh, that are uh, minor issues and um, have already contacted potential counsel in the event that I was appointed. Uh, the second issue requires a bit of a confession. Um, I confess that I, I'm a bit frustrated by the coarsening of our politics. Um, and that makes the desirability of running for office in this era, uh, it's lost some of its luster. And I think it prevents otherwise good and honorable people from putting their name forward. Um, I, I know this is a bit silly, but this struck me during the last campaign so much that I kept it. Uh, this is what I received in the mail. I know it's backwards. I recognize that very well. But uh, Council Member Lamb, you would be surprised to know that you're not just wrong on some issues for Sammamish, but you were wrong on every issue for the city of Sammamish. And you know it, what happens is very important policy discussions that necessitate nuance are lost. If you voted for Amy Lamb, you were voting for unfettered development. And if you voted for the competitor, you were voting for someone that was gonna turn off that development spigot. 
And, you know, for someone that does land use and, and real estate work, uh, I know that's just not quite how the real world works. And so I'll admit it's a little bit easier to be appointed to the council. Uh, but when you're on the council, you at least have a platform for those nuanced discussions uh, and uh, interactions with citizens. And even if, you know, you were to choose to, to run again, I think you have a little bit better of a platform to have a nuanced discussion. But uh, when you're a newbie and trying to get on the council, uh, boy, I, I just don't like the dialogue that's out there. And, and um, I think it prevents good people from putting their names forward. And I think that's sad. Thank you. Um, the second question is how will you balance development and infrastructure needs of our community? Yeah, I, I think a lot of this is um, dictated really by our State Growth Management Act that was adopted in 1990. Uh, I obviously deal a lot with the Growth Management Act in my practice and I practice before the Growth Management Hearings Board. Um, in an ideal world under the Growth Management Act, they do require concurrency and that means that uh, infrastructure is going to be available at the time and to the extent that you have development. And obviously that's been the big discussion with this council for quite some time. Um, but I think that you have the pieces in place now to move forward. If you, if you stick by those decisions and um, come together a little bit around those. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Infrastructure is different and varied. First there's sewer. I think we were all shocked at the moratorium that was imposed uh, by the Sammamish Plateau Water. Um, disappointed that King County had withdrawn its commitment to fund the North Diversion. And while there may be sewer certificates uh, and water certificates of availability in the near future, um, those are gone as far as development on the north end of the city if we don't fix that problem. And I'm concerned that uh, we are all paying monthly sewer fees that are sewer treatment capacity fees. And our funds aren't really being used appropriately by the county for that project that has been long promised. As far as stormwater, uh, I work and hire a lot of stormwater engineers. And I'll admit that as soon as you think you know something about stormwater, you don't because it's different in every situation. Um, I am a proponent of low impact development techniques uh, stormwater infiltration and detention and attenuation. But sometimes here on the plateau with our soils, it doesn't work. We have glacial till uh, and clays, and that means that our water doesn't infiltrate. It gets perched on top of an, an impermeable layer under the ground, and then it shows up in our neighborhoods as excessive stormwater. And you say to yourself, well, gee, Normally LID techniques and best management practices are the most environmentally friendly. And sometimes they can actually contribute to um, the complex situation of um, the hardening of our stream corridors and our flooding. Uh, you make our Kokanee work group very upset if you don't do things right. And so I think it's time to re-envision our stormwater. I would at least entertain a discussion about having a regional stormwater uh, detention facility. Why? Sometimes when we use level three flow control, which is required in parts of our city, I've run the calcs with my stormwater engineer and they say, Sam, this is a mini subdivision of three or four houses and we need a stormwater detention vault the size of a football field. And it's not economically feasible and it doesn't work. I think developers would be more than willing to pay twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 per unit if they could send their stormwater to a regional facility and then allow us to make sure that it is in a tight line and makes its way down to Lake Sammamish without affecting our other uh, streams um, that are having problems. Because under the Clean Water Act, Lake Sammamish is a receiving body of water and volume doesn't matter as long as it's appropriately cleaned and, and treated. Finally, there's roads and concurrency We've switched to the VC calculation. Um, I, I think that's going to work. Uh, our issues with the growth board were largely procedural. We're fixing that with the um, draft environmental impact statement and presumably with the comprehensive plan that we'll be updating in the next coming years. I do wish that as we sat here today, we had some post pandemic um, traffic data I think there will be some permanent changes uh, in our employment that will be effectuated by this pandemic. 
and uh, that may make some changes in what we do for our roads. I'm hesitant, but I agree with the council in adopting alternative four in the environmental impact statement. My hesitancy is I think when you talk to our citizens, they don't really want five lane boulevards on either Sahali Way, 212, East Lake Sammamish. Um, I get that that gives us the option, but my support for that is really conditioned on taking council at its word, that that is not a mandatory uh, requirement. I think the price tag of uh, was uh, of from 290 million to 387 million for alternative four was staggering. And we've already had the discussion tonight about our, our limited tax base. And so I have concerns about how we would pay for that and if that would require increased um, taxes. Uh, but I think that there's a way to get there with the framework that's in place uh, by the council. I wasn't thrilled with any of the options in the EIS, but I think the council did its best with the option that was chosen. And, and I think as long as it's not considered mandatory, we've got the flexibility as a body moving forward to figure out how that's going to work. And the last standardized question is, what is your personal vision and timeline for a community hub or town center? Uh, please include as much detail as you can, including housing mix, commercial considerations, and transportation options. Yeah, I think the first thing that I'd say about the town center is, I think we have a messaging problem and that maybe the public isn't as far apart on this issue as we think. Because I'm a land use attorney, I'm like this magnet in the neighborhoods I live in where everyone wants to come talk to me about our growth issues and everything. <laughs> and I notice that when I talk to them and I just ask them point blank, do you want a town center? The answer is invariably no. They, they do like our bedroom community. But then when I explain to them that we have a growth management act, it requires that we do a 20 year population projection for the state of Washington. The Department of Financial Management or the Office of Financial Management allocates that growth to our 39 counties. In turn, they allocate it to our cities. And then we essentially have a growth target that we're required to accommodate with our uh, zoning uh, regulations and our comprehensive plan. And so as soon as I say that the question isn't really, really will we grow, it's how and by how much. And I say, where would you prefer that density? All of a sudden they say, town center would be great. Um, because they don't necessarily want it in their neighborhoods. And so, first of all, I think, I think we do have a messaging uh, problem there. Uh, citizens worry about losing our bedroom uh, community. Um, I think they worry about us becoming Issaquah or Redmond. They don't want big box retailers. Home Depot, Lowe's, no. Ace Hardware, yes. In fact, you may recall in 2013 when we lost Ace Hardware, I haven't seen our council chambers more packed in a long time. <laughs> that was a gathering place. It was small, but it prevented all sorts of trips off the plateau. It helped our you know, tax base with sales revenue. And the council at the time tried everything possible to see where can we ro lo relocate them? Where is there a shovel ready project to build a new building? And it didn't exist. So um, I think the answer is that we do need a town center. For timing, I think we don't have as much control over that as we would like. Um, we've got obviously have a concurrency problem with the intersection of uh, 202 and Sahali Way, but we can't really take that into account since it's extra jurisdictional. That's very frustrating. Um, I will tell you that when I work with other jurisdictions and have concerns about the timing of development, my preferred method has been development agreements. I've negotiated them in the city of Redmond. I've negotiated them uh, in other jurisdictions. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, both of our uh, cities to the north and the south use them. That's Issaquah and Redmond. It's a voluntary agreement with a developer who says, hey, here are my plans. But because it's a contract between them and the city, the city can say, hey, can we phase this development? Can you do it in these stages so that we have time for our infrastructure to keep up? And oh, by the way, because we're entering into this development agreement, you are obligated developer to give us a public goods. What would those be? Frequently, it's um, 
it's um, low income housing or affordable housing. Other times it's other type of public benefits that we would not necessarily have an opportunity to require of a developer uh, if they were just to come in with an application. And so they allow some creativity there. I don't know if the developer of the town center would be interested, but it's one of the few ways that I think you can control timing, which none of the other candidates have really discussed. Um, my vision for it, uh, if, if the small, you know, um, businesses will accommodate it. I, I think like everyone else, I'd like a walkable downtown with mixed uses, um, smaller retailers. I'd love some dining options and open space, and obviously the variety of housing products that I think are already on the table. Um, I think the market will decide whether that's, you know, whether those businesses are sustainable. To some degree, I share some of Mr. Amato's uh, concerns there. But I think that if you have an adequate population base, it will ultimately support, uh, you know, the businesses that are there. And then it's got to have some transit. I don't feel like we are getting our dollars out of our RTA tax that we pay for our tabs. Uh, Sound Transit has uh, no plan for coming to Sammamish. Uh, they'll get to uh, Issaquah when they darn well please, and that's in about 20 years. And given the budget overruns and cost increases and inflation, it will be longer than that. And they'll be to Marymore Park in Redmond, hopefully in, in two years. But the problem with transit is always what we call the la first mile and the last mile. How do, how do you get them there? And unfortunately, our park and ride is at the Pine Lake Community Center. It's not where we're envisioning the town center. And so uh, I think we need a transit hub there and we need to work cooperatively with either Metro um uh to to solve that last mile problem otherwise um i think that uh, the number of cars on the road uh is going to change or or even increase uh with more density so that's the last of the standardized questions so i'm just going to go ahead and ask you a question that i had asked um mr amato and that is dei will be a priority for the city this year um, if you were on council, what DEI practices would you like to implement? Yeah, uh, what do you mean by DEI, the diversity, equity, and inclusion? Mm -hmm, that is correct. Yeah, um, I, I think that it's, it's an important uh, issue. I think my vision for equity, diversity, inclusion uh, is, is going to be more broad than strictly looking at, at race and ethnicity. Um, I, I'm in a unique position as an attorney to see what I think are injustices uh, of equity, diversity, and inclusion all the time. Uh, and perhaps it, it, it's just most helpful to give you a concrete um, example, and it is not intended at all to disparage this council because sometimes I worry about the information you receive and the volume that you receive it. But uh, I currently, uh, state law uh, regulates adult family homes. Uh, they are regulated by DSHS, it is not something within the regulation and purview of the city. Uh, the state legislature a few years ago decided that we are at a huge um, deficit when it comes to adult family homes. And they allowed adult family homes that previously could have only six adults to increase their capacity from seven to eight. That required additional scrutiny and licensing from uh, the state. But state law says that it essentially preempts local zoning codes and that cities shall consider that a residential use and it shall be lawful in all residential zones. We have nine adult family homes in Sammamish. Uh, the vast majority of them are provided by our Romanian community. Most of them are uh, immigrants here. They are English as second language and um, they are just great at adult family homes. I had a client that applied to increase their beds from, uh, from the current six to eight and uh, the city denied it and basically said that would have to be in a commercial zone, even though state law clearly states that it's, a res it's residential purposes for all zones. And I'm sure the council felt, gee, that's kind of a political hot potato. Who wants an adult family home next to them in their community? And, and the reality is, I think once the state legislature spoke, that policy debate's over because the city doesn't have the ability to preempt state law. And so what it meant is that my client uh, had to spend 20 or $25,000 to appeal to the hearing examiner. 
and have the hearing examiner basically say, yeah, the city doesn't have a right to regulate this. And I view that as an issue of equity. If someone is clearly entitled to something, but the city, and there were even hints from the city attorney that, yeah, this probably won't go very well. And hints by the hearing examiner after the hearing that, yeah, I'm likely to rule in favor of the appellant. I just can't imagine telling someone, hey, you know, fork over $25,000 when that may mean everything to you in order to get what you were entitled to anyway. And I think that when we talk about equity, diversity, and inclusion, it's got to be something that we do as we go. Yes, there are policy issues that will have to change, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm the expert on it. But we should also be considering that, you know, every time one of those issues comes in front of us, because the city council did have the opportunity to stop that appeal, to, you know, resolve it or settle it. And I guess it's still possible that the hearing examiner could rule otherwise. But in 17 years, I don't think I've lost a single case either where I was aligned with the city and supporting them or where I was opposing the city. And it feels like this one's fairly black and white as well. So I think equity, diversity, inclusion also means treating our disabled citizens that would use adult family homes and our aging elderly appropriately as well. And so I think we need to broaden that a little bit more than looking simply at race and ethnicity. You know, my background, I think, allows me to more easily see, I think, some of those injustices that I believe we have the ability to remedy without it being a big deal. But I think it would be a big deal to anyone to have to expend those types of funds when really they're trying to provide a service to the community. And if you look at Issaquah and Redmond, we, of any jurisdiction in King County, have the lowest percentage per thousand seniors of adult family homes. And I would like to see our aging population be able to stay in the community that they love as they age. Thank you, Samuel. Councilmember Treen. Well, Samuel, I think you've answered all my questions because I called you and talked to you. So, but so thank you for your time and coming on and and look forward to hearing the other questions that council members have. But he's answered all my questions already. Thank you. I appreciate that. And for the rest of the council members, please realize you probably know this already. Council member Treen doesn't hold anything back. So even though he interviewed me separately, I was still on the hot seat. So I'm up next. We've covered a lot of ground already. Appreciate your comprehensive answers. So what changes do you envision making to Sammamish City Code given your experience as an attorney? Yeah, some of this seems pretty rudimentary, but I think just our use matrices, matrices for each of our zones, you know, whether it's our zoning matrices or our commercial matrices, they're really out of date. They're missing a lot of key categories. Sometimes we will have a catch-all for a use, and there are really sub-uses that I think are more appropriate to be a conditional use versus a permitted use and the like. And so, I mean, we've been playing catch-up ever since we incorporated in 1999 because we inherited our code from King County. It was still absolutely the right thing to do. Council Member Moran, I appreciate you fighting for that at the time and working on incorporation. But it means that what we really have is kind of a hodgepodge. We've been fixing it. You've done round one and two of your updates. So I'd like to see those matrices fixed. We also have too many definitions of terms that are either missing or inadequate. Even during this last update, I was a little disappointed. I was hoping that we would get more definitions. Many of our disputes come down to the fact that we use a term in one place and not in another place, and that term isn't defined. And that is the ground on which attorneys thrive and make their arguments. I also didn't like the fact that we gave each definition a specific number in the code. 
um, you know, I envision that as you go along and we update it and we add definitions, you add one definition in the A section and it means you have to renumber all of them. It means that all of your hearing examiner decisions and things that reference sections of code are now out of date. Uh, I would have preferred assigning a subsection to each letter of the alphabet where you just have A definitions and B definitions so that those would never change. Uh, I also think that we could use some uh, design standards. Uh, we have those for the town center. I think those are great. I think we just added um, design standards for uh, arterial uh, development. I think we're missing them for other uh, important parts of our community. Great, thank you. Deputy Mayor Clark. <laughs> I'm getting so many good lessons this from just your interview. I um, uh, really appreciate your time. So you did kind of touch on, you know, one of my concerns was like current potential litigation that you're, you know, opposing counsel. Um, so I was kind of wondering like, you know, what would that look like you moving forward with that legal work and um, like what kind of unfinished business or, you know, would that be seamless for you? Yeah. Um I think just as an umbrella response, let me first say that I, I think if I had to describe myself, it would be a proponent of good governance. So part, part of that is the ethics. Uh, you know, the two matters that I currently have are property acquisition on uh, Issaquah Falsity Road. Um, I think that is in the works after a phone conference with counsel this week, and that's easy to have an attorney substitute on that. Obviously, when it came to voting or settling what the compensation would be, that's just a matter of recusing myself. Um, the other matter is uh, pending before the hearing examiner. It will be fully briefed this week, and it's at that point in the hands of the examiner. That's easy to get substitution of counsel as well. Um, on the good governance side, though, um, I, I would like, uh, I've kind of complained about the coarsening dialogue. I think we could do better um, as a, as a council, uh, a fun fact about me is, uh, seven years ago, I was asked to give a speech to an organization here in Sammamish. The question I was given to answer is if you could change one thing in the city, what would it be? I think they were expecting, uh, complaints about, uh, city, you know, land use regulations. I actually gave a presentation about how we were lacking the rights of initiative and referenda. <laughs> Somehow those were overlooked when we incorporated in 1999. I didn't expect it, but that lit a firestorm and uh, the council adopted that, I think in 2016. So, you know, in my mind, that's just sort of a good check and balance. And I think it was a good sign that the council was willing to give a little bit of authority back to the citizens and trust them. And I think the good news is no one's had to use it since then. It's there, the right exists, uh, but we haven't needed it, but it acts as a check in, in the event that uh, we, you know, you just do something that's out there that, that, that our citizens don't, don't want. Um, so um, I would like a little bit better transparency um, at, at the city. Uh, I am concerned with some of uh, the issues with Public Records Act requests. Uh, I'll tell you, I did have um, uh, one lawsuit years ago about a Public Records Act issue with the city. And I will never forget the integrity from the city clerk when I deposed her. And the first question I asked is, was the city's response acceptable here? She just looked at me and said, no, no, it wasn't. Uh, and so I, I, I just, I think we can do a, a little bit better on that side. And I think the citizens are watching and, and we need that. They, I think they need a little bit more renewed faith um, in us as a city. There's been too much turnover with city staff. We've had six, you know, city managers in four years. We've lost a couple city attorneys. My goal here is to write the ship. I'm not sure I'm a career politician. Uh, and if we can write the ship before the next election, I'm not sure care, I care whether I run again. If not, uh, at least I have a platform to for a little more nuanced discussion with the public. Thank you. Councilmember Moran. I don't know if she's there. Oh, there she okay. goes. Um, well, first of all, thank you for um, making yourself available this evening. It's nice to meet you. I don't even know where to start here. I, I, I've learned so much with everything you've said. Um, I do want to thank you for all the work and stuff that you did for the right of the referendum step. I think that was amazing, and I think that um, it was a right that was, uh, it was some, simply overlooked. 
And um, I was very excited to hear you talk about and know the issues with the uh, northern diversion for the sewer and the fact that, you know, it's it's been in the in, in the making since the late 70s. And so, yeah, it was kind of uh, kind of a surprise when the, the money just disappeared. Um, so, you know, so many different topics. So I'm going to pick a <laughs> list of questions as you know so many different things. Um, okay, so I'm going to go this way. If you had been at a retreat that we had a week or two weeks ago now, um, and you had to pick two topics uh, to put on the work chart for the year, what would you have picked for your two topics for the city? That's a tough one. Um, I think the stormwater issue is, it requires a legitimate discussion. Um, it's easy to dismiss, you know, naysayers on it. And sometimes it's easy to dismiss city staff if maybe their explanations of things have shifted a little bit. And it's, as I've mentioned, um, having worked with stormwater engineers over the years, like I said, the moment I think I know something, uh, I don't. And um, I think we need to take a look at, at how we're handling our stormwater. Uh, you know, see the Tamarack neighborhood. Thank you, Mary Wichter look at uh, Inglewood Hill, uh, you know, because we incorporated um, and so much development had had existed uh, pre-incorporation, we just have a lot of uh, neighborhoods that have never had the adequate infrastructure. Uh, I'm in the Sammamish Highlands. I mean, there are no sidewalks, there aren't really, you know, any street lights, and yet um, we're gonna get hundreds more cars as soon as high school number four um, is um, constructed. And, and part of that includes stormwater. And, you know, our neighborhood doesn't have great stormwater. Um, uh, you know, none of the houses were built with any sort of infiltration or detention. And of course, we, we may get much of that from the new high school. And I, I'm assuming that our basin goes to Laughing uh, Jacobs Lake, which, which carries its own issues. So I think the first one would be stormwater. Um, I think I think the second one would be um, a long-term plan for financial sustainability. And, and I'll just be honest with you, I'm not a huge proponent of adding a B&O tax. I just don't think that there's the stomach for that in Sammamish. Thank you for that. <laughs> and, um, and that means that we're left with our real estate excise tax, which will continue to go up as much as our houses, you know, go up every time that they're bought and sold. Uh, the sales and use tax, which we do need um, more uh, commercial um, businesses in the city that will increase that base. Um, and then you know, beyond that, we have our we have our permit fees, but state law says under RCW 8202020 that those cannot be used to to fund the general fund. Those must be used for just reviewing and processing applications. And so, those seem to ebb and flow depending on boom or bust with development. And I think that that requires, I think, sizing our staff appropriately during those times of of boom and bust. So. I'd like to have a better handle on our finances. I do have a minor uh, in business management. Thank you. Councilmember Howe. Thank you. So let's talk about disinformation and precision of language and communication and messaging. You've actually touched on all of this in many of your answers tonight. And so let's talk about the single source of truth a definition we can agree on and shared knowledge and how it gets communicated. I want to understand your point of view. Where is the single source of truth? How would you communicate that? What should it be? How should it be done? And how would you measure success? Yeah, um, that is a, that's a wonderful question um, because as soon as you believe you have a single source of truth, uh, if you have any degree of humility, you might reach the point that you realize you're wrong. And that can actually be a, a tough realization. Um, I, from a religious perspective, I, I do believe that there's a single source of truth. Uh, I'm not sure that that applies much in this realm. Um, but if we're talking in this realm, I actually think it's a mistake for there to be a single source of truth. I, I value being in a room with individuals of different perspectives. 
I'll tell you, you know, sometimes I've had to, um, even at the city of Sammamish, I, I've always been able to be, uh, even if I had to disagree, to be agreeable. And that's why I felt like I've had the respect of staff for many, many years. It's a little bit hard now with so much turnover because I haven't had a chance to know as many of them during the pandemic. But I mean, I've been in a room for some of the city's most contentious issues. I'm thinking of when I represented um, all of the waterfront property owners on Lake Sammamish, Beaver and Pine, when we did our first major update to the city shoreline master program, those property owners uh, were well healed financially. They wanted to be able to, you know, build as close to the water as possible. Um, a shoreline master program is not effective until it's approved by the Washington State Department of Ecology. So ecology thought otherwise. And uh, you can imagine that um, in negotiating some type of compromise that that was a, a, a tense situation. Um, we came away from that with me uh, drafting and making suggestions to um, significant sections of our shoreline master program that are still uh, in effect and have survived another comprehensive update since then. And it was just a matter of um, balancing those interests and, and finding compromise. But the moment I think that I have uh, unfailing truth, that gives me the right to um, shut you out, um, to uh, disparage your position or whatever. I just don't think that that's um, very productive. Like I said, you asked me why I didn't run. I don't really care for the coarsening of our politics. And that's just an honest, honest answer. You put your name out there and you're a target and you're talking to someone that is a litigator. I bump noses for a living. I'm not afraid of bumping noses. Uh, it just doesn't mean I necessarily like to voluntarily submit myself to that all the time. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Rodabaugh, I think that concludes all of our questions. Thank you so much for your time this evening. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. So, Madam City Clerk, I think we have one final um, applicant, Yindi Betcher, and hopefully I'm saying her last name correctly. And then, Council, I think we should probably take a break. <laughs> Hello, Ms. Butcher. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, we're going to ask Thanks. a few questions of you um, uh, that are those standardized questions that you've already received, and then Council will ask some individual questions. Um, so let's see. Uh, Councilmember Treen, I'm going to have you ask the questions, please. Thank you. Hello, Yandy. Um, hi. So, hi. Um, why did you choose not to run in the November election? Well, in November at that time, we have a family issue. My father passed away in the 1995, and then also we adopted one dog. It's disabled, the puppy. So we are really, really handful. Um, so at that time, it was not appropriate for me to run at that time. Sorry for your loss. Uh, Thank I lost, you. I lost my dad here just recently as well, so I know that. It's real difficult. Yeah. Yes, because um, you don't, you know, one day your parents are going to leave you, but when that happens, you don't just don't prepare. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, this next question is going to seem a little small compared to that topic. So, but how would you balance development and infrastructure needs of our community? Yes. Just as a longtime resident of Sammamish for almost more than 20 years, I have to be very humbled and see this is a wonderful community and develop. From, we used to live in the Beaver Lake Drive. It's all wooded and trees and dark. But then we see the Highland developed, has a lot of uh, many um, grocery stores. So as we develop, it's my duty, I think, as a long-term Sammamish um, resident to care, to listen to our community. And when we just hear the minority is very less population, and recently we have a such a uh, large number of the minority. Um, and also 
full of uh, infrastructure need to grow with our community growth. Uh, it is important that we provide match the needs of people who live here and love living Sammamish. Um, also, I'm a multiracial family. We have in the in our family, we speak German, Japanese, Chinese. We live overseas. So this is very important. I think I can bring bring in to this community. Excellent. And then um, what's your personal vision and timeline for a community hub or town center? And include as much detail as you can, including housing mix, commercial consideration, and transportation options. Okay. I think it's uh, great to set a 10 years vision of the future and looking forward to working our city council, community member, and uh, expert on their insights and ideas and experience. Um, ultimately, I believe we all shared goal of making Sammamish a better place to live and work and enjoy our family, friendly family, because I heard many people come from outside of Sammamish, they come here, they say, it's such a friendly in, uh, city. So I was really proud of that. And then also uh, our lifestyle here has a lot of park, promoting confidence of a park, public access and facilities neighborhood and the area of a small business operating in our area. And then community hubs, commercial, maintain the community center. And then I hope it will be have a, a, more, a culture center too. Um, and then also promote local small business, like uh, we talk about at Ace Hardware Stores and others. That would be a wonderful idea. And small retail option and full service restaurants. And um, give uh, local people an opportunity to work locally so we don't need to commute too far and create more carbon footprints. And then the housing, of course, the Sammamish housing is getting more and more expensive. It's not affordable anymore. So, and then we also have a good housing and then excellent school in our community. And then we also have to invest in the transportation option, I think, because we always, we far away from the places we need to go. So we all have to drive. So if we have some public transportation option, for example, the buses will go in more deep, like uh, I live in Trossax, we don't have any bus here. Um, so we all have to venture out with individual one person in the car and cause a lot of uh, traffic jam. So that's, uh, that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Uh, so I have one question for you, just because uh, that, that was the three basic questions that I have one. Um, can you just describe your experiences with uh, budgeting or, uh, you know, finances? Well, actually, I'm a working in financial sector. I work for JP Morgan Chase. I do a lot of wealth management and then the uh, responsible lending. Um, so this I create, I used to be a teacher before as I become the finance, uh, financial um, person. So we doing a lot of education, I think, and budgeting. I have experience when my, my kids was work, uh, studying in Overlake School and uh, I was in the um, PTA chair for all those funding and especially I start from the program to helping uh, basically middle income family because overly school is very expensive. Even the middle income family have a hard time. So we're doing the budgeting for how can we shortfall, we want to fund the financial aid program. So we don't have this budget. So how we can do it. So I start those costs with program and uh, raise the fund, go reach out the corporation and the, within the community and set the budget for the students who are not able to 
uh, fund themselves to do the global project week. So I do have that. We have a goal and we going to make work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so my question is surrounding our currently adopted concurrency plan, and I'm curious if you think that adequately covers our roads, and if not, why not? Um, in this topic, I haven't looked into it, so it's very difficult for me to comment on that. No problem. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Mayor Clark. Yes, hello, thank you. Um, thank you. I'm not sure if you are still involved with um, like exchange students and studying abroad. Um, I was just wondering how, you know, like your partnership with school districts here, kind of like in the city of Sammamish, um, like some success out of that or like other things that we can improve on um, as a city hosting and being, you know, that for somebody. Oh, yes, this is actually my expertise. I used to, I moved from Los Angeles. I work for Pepperdine University as international student advisor. So we doing, I doing a lot of exchange program. And then when I was um, in the Overlake School, we did exchange program for overseas, especially Far East Asia. And we hosting the student for exchange program. And then also I worked with Skylar High School at that time because they was thinking they are teaching Japanese. And uh, also I was talking about the Chinese student and the Japanese student. They want to do one year program, study here. And um, so I had a lot of interaction with all the school, include a private school or public school. Like Sammamish, we have an East Side Catholic school. I working with them too for um, doing those exchange program for the student and, and set up their foreign language um, classes. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Council Member Moran. Well, thank you for um, coming and talking with us tonight. Um, my question Thank is, um, with all your knowledge and, and the Overlake School, and I think that's fascinating because um, that was I had a child that went to the Overlake School for a little while, so I like that's a great. Oh, school. wonderful! Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so a uh, question that I'm going to have for you is, um, if you had to pick two topics that you think are the most important to the residents of the city, what would they be? Uh, I think it was froze for a while, so I didn't get a question. Okay, so if you had to pick two topics that you believe are um, the most important to residents in the city, what do you think that they would be? I think the two, I'm a very passionate about um, a diversity inclusion because um, we have a lot of, I interact a lot of residents here because they come from, just recent year, come from different country. And they always, you know, because they are uncertain and they not know the community very well. So always feel they are not part of communities in the city. So I just feel because myself is, uh, I'm an immigrant and um, I learn, I go through all of that. So I think we need to include them to be part of community, welcome, welcome them, not just left them and they just by themselves, they always, their group, even if it's Japanese, they are all collected together, Chinese, all of that, it's not inclusive enough. And then the other one is trans public transportation. I do think even Mercer Island, they have buses, right? In Sammamish, we don't have a lot of options. We have maybe the Pine Lake Plaza has one, and then also have maybe uh, um, Tahani has a warm bus maybe, and then Issaquah Highland. Mm -hmm. So we just really on our own drive out. That's always, I think that's the first things we can do is to reduce the carbon footprint. Okay, great, thank you. Council Member Howe. Thank you. Hi, Andy. Hi, Hi. Like, thank uh, you. Thank you. I would like to ask you about um, middle housing. 
the missing mm -hmm. middle. So we are strategizing as a community, how do we put different types of housing into Sammamish that give us a mix, that give us some affordable, some missing middle housing. Have you thought about any strategies or any things that you would pursue to try to help shore up housing diversity in Sammamish? Yes, I think that this is very important. I thought about that over you know, even more than 10 years ago. Uh, first of all, it has to be zoning issue. So that's we can do. And then the other thing is when we develop, we need to have a high density houses for a lot of people were against it, but I still think it's give us the diversity. And also, um, but coming from the negative impact is the traffic. So I think the city we can do before we issue the permit, there will be a request sort of have to have a builder to allow them to allocate some of the money and then obligation to build a road or maybe contribute some of the school funding to to build the school because we have to expand it expanding the school because we have a more population so instead of put a burden on the resident so we can ask a builder to contribute some of that but i totally support for the high density houses Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Lamb. Hi, hey, Andy. I think hey. it's so cool. Hi. I think it's so cool that your your household speaks so many different languages. Yeah. We are we speak Japanese, German, Chinese, all of that, and we speak dialect. And um, it's uh, it's, I think, the multiculture is more minority than just one race, right? Mm -hmm. Because I always think it's supposed to be more melting pot. Thank you My so question much. is actually really simple, and that's how many council meetings have you mm -hmm. attended or actually rather watched this past year? I watch sometimes, but I didn't attend. Okay. Yeah, because I have to, you know, take care of our puppies and, uh, the family, all the parents, all of that. So it takes a lot of time. And then I work too. I work for uh, JP Morgan in the finance part of it. And then also I have my business as culture exchange. Also, it's non perfect because I just want to build a bridge between the East and to West. And sometimes I teaching used to be before COVID, I teaching our Seahawks player speak um, Chinese. <laughs> yeah, so I was just really occupied because I think it's wonderful they go to China, the Seahawks member go to China. I think it's wonderful. So I want to prepare them a little bit for the culture and the simple language. That must have been fun. <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, Well, fun. thank you for applying. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. So, Yindi, that will conclude our questions. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Council, it is 9.42. Um, I think a break is well in order at this point. Um, and then we have the opportunity to go into executive session. Um, but because it's 9.42 and we haven't even gotten to our consent calendar yet, um, I think we should go ahead and extend the meeting a substantial bit so we can bite off some of the agenda in addition to probably what I estimate to be about 15 minutes in executive session. If we need more, we can extend. So um, can we say that we will um, included in our break and the executive session, which is to evaluate the qualifications of a candidate for appointment for elective office pursuant to RCW 42.30.1101H. Um, and we do expect action. Um, so why don't we come back? Um, well, we'd be back from executive session at 1010. So I need a motion to extend us beyond that time. I would suggest at least a lip. No, I would suggest at least 11, because we're going to go later than that to get this agenda done. <laughs> That's just a suggestion, though. I we, motion to extend I, that. I, I just need someone to move that or move something. I move that we extend our meeting until 11. 
Councilmember Member Lamb? Oh, I was going to do that. Okay. All right, we need a second. Second. Okay, thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we will extend our meeting until 11 p.m. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, by a vote of 6-0, we're extended to 11. We will be back here at, um, what time did I say, 10-10? From executive session, including with our break. Okay, quick break, council, five minutes or less, please, and then executive session. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, council, I don't, we don't have a quorum back yet. Here we go. Okay. Oh, my video's not on. Sorry. There we go. All right. Lito, we good to go? Mm, Councilmember Moran's doing laundry right now. She's going to come back. <laughs> so, well, I think we're good if we're, okay. All right. So, um, the agenda back up in front of me here. All right, council. So the um, interviewed finalists, um, I'd entertain motions from council. Of course, we're missing a council member for this really important part. <laughs> but council, if we're going to appoint a council member, we do have to have a motion. And if someone wants to ping council member Moran, because I think she might have forgotten that we were going to be voting on a council member. In. Is she coming in? Oh, good. Christy, can you hear me? Yep. I can't see you. All I can do is hear yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Punch, punching buttons. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'd entertain a motion. Where are we? We're still on the same topic, which is the council vacancy. Ah, okay. No one has a motion. Thank you, Councilmember Lamb. I'm just clarifying, are we nominating? No, you are making a motion to appoint somebody and then you'll need a second and then we'd have discussion and then council will vote. Okay. Nobody wants to go first. Council Member Train. You're on mute though. Yeah, so I nominate Jerry Norman to fill the vacant position six seat. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Councilmember Treen, do you want to speak to your motion? Yeah, I've, I've known Jerry Norman for better part of 30 years. One thing I know about him is that he is a, he's a man of high moral fiber um he he's run major corporations that have been traded on the public's um exchange on the stock market he's developed he's been a developer he's been a resident of sammamish for 20 plus years and he cares about the community deeply um if you didn't know this about him he kind of doesn't like to he didn't share this with our interviews, but he also was a part of the hand radio operations for the emergency preparedness. Uh, that was a nationwide act a live activity that he participated in and is a hand radio operator himself. And so when it comes to emergency management, he's at the highest level of, uh, of knowing what's going on with that. He has some unique ideas about what where the city of Sammamish should go and some of the things that we could do in the permitting process and uh, handling our regulations. And so I think he'd be somebody that 
uh, we would be very grateful for having him on the council as a decision maker of this body. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and back to you. Any further discussion on Mr. Norman? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 Okay, by a vote of two, four, um, nays have it. So we need another motion. Councilmember Lamb. I motion to nominate Pam Stewart. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Councilmember Lamb, did you want to speak to your motion? I think we have a lot of well qualified candidates. I don't think any of the candidates can step right in without a ramp up time. Pam Stewart is still the only candidate that we have have, that we have um, in the mix who um, is current on everything city related and all of the litigation. Is there any further discussion? I'll just offer that um, while Councilmember Stewart um, certainly has the ability to step in, I do not think she is the only candidate we have that has the ability to step in with a wide knowledge base. Um, as evidenced by, I think, our interviews here this evening. So I will not be supporting this motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, 3-3, three, three, motion fails. We'd entertain another motion. Yeah, I move to nominate uh, Melanie Kelsey, position six. Looking for a second. I'll second. Okay. I'd like to speak to my motion. Been, it's been moved and seconded. Council Member Treen, would you like to speak to your motion? Yeah, I would. I've, I've interviewed Melanie Kelsey. I've, I've worked uh, on her campaign, worked diligently with her. I know that she's a quality person. She has skills that would help this council when it comes to our budgeting. She has 20 years of experience with budgeting. She'll do fine and uh, she's really up to speed on almost all the issues that are going on in the city except for legal because she has not been a part of executive session. So other than legal, she's up to speed on what's going on in the city and would make a great addition to this board. Back to you. Is there any further discussion, Council? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Aye. Nay. Okay, three, three, motion fails. I'd entertain another motion, Council. We only have 40 minutes of our council meeting left, so just... So I move to nominate Josh Amato. I'll second that. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Council Member Treem, would you like to speak to your motion? Again, here's somebody who's up to speed, knows exactly where we're headed as a city. He's got good ideas, even though I don't agree with everything that Josh Amato stands for. Uh, I think his voice is a good voice to have uh, on the council and somebody that I could uh, definitely work with and collaborate with to, to move the city forward and updating the comprehensive plan, the regulations he's well aware of. I think the only thing he might have a little bit of coming up to speed with is uh, storm water, but he has a pretty good understanding of that as well. And I believe he only lost the election by about 250 votes. So the public definitely was in support of him as well to 49 point something percent so any further discussion 
Councilmember Lamb. And that, I'd like to also point out that when Pam Stewart won, she won by 9,000 votes. Don't know what that has to do with this nominee. Okay, seeing that there is no more discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, three, three, motion fails. Okay, I'll make a motion then to appoint Samuel Rodebaugh. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, I'll speak to my motion. Uh, Mr. Rodebaugh seems very up to speed. He seems pit pretty middle of the road and can appeal to both sides of this council. And I think as a an attorney, um, he would add value and something to this council that we do not have currently. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 Okay, by a vote of 3-3, motion fails. Really? Wow. That's what okay, I, nom I nominate Debbie Treen. <laughs> okay. By far the most qualified person that can be up to speed. Oh, excuse me. I nominate Debbie Treen. Yep, I second that. Thank you. I'd okay, like it's to speak been moved and seconded. Counts oh, Councilmember Treen, would you like to speak to your motion? I sure would. Yeah, here's a lady who, <laughs> though I disagree with her on, on a lot of things, she is highly qualified to sit on this council. She's been the mayor of Bothell. She's been a council member. She's an author she, of the growth management, or at least the initiative that then spurned the Growth Management Act. She sat on a numerous of boards, has helped raise millions of dollars for kidney research. Talk about her character. She's, she's the kind of lady that would give anything for the love of her family. And I think you ladies all can appreciate that. She was willing to give her kidney to her daughter. So her, here's the other thing that I know about my wife that drives me nuts, but she's an accountant at the highest level. She doesn't lie. And she's going to follow, she's going to, she's going to do what's best for the city of Sammamish. She's, a, she's the highest qualified individual that we have. And it's just sad that she has to be married to me. And that would be the only reason why you would eliminate her from a position of sitting on this council. She would definitely deserve sitting on this council. Yep. and serve the board and the citizens of Roots and Manners. Thank you. Any further discussion? I agree with what he said. Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 Okay, by a vote of two, four, nays have it. Well, sounds like we might be done. Well, there are s still candidates that could be nominated, and anybody that was on the winning side of a vote can bring back somebody for reconsideration. I nominate Michael Boyer. Sorry, who? Michael Boyer. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, as someone that was on the winning side of um, a vote for Mr. Norman, I'd like to nominate Jerry Norman. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I don't think I need to speak to my motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Nay. 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 Okay, three, three, motion fails. Okay, well, since I was on side one, I'd um, like to reconsider uh, Samuel Rodebaugh. So I think I may need assistance from our city attorney <coughs> on a 3-3 split. There is no like majority side. Um, That's correct, Mayor. So I don't think, unfortunately, I don't think we can reconsider anybody that was a 3-3. Which was everyone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Council, we have the option to go back in executive session and unless you don't think we're going to be able to sway anyone one way or the other. Um, I nominate Jake Hafner. Well, I don't like the man. Yeah. I think we should probably go back to executive session or does it not pay? I don't know. Well, I think we have to try. I mean, much to your point previously, yep, uh, Councilmember Moran, I think, you know, if we're gonna stalemate on, on everyone, um, unfortunately that hamstrings us on several issues because we can split on other things other than just council members as we've seen happen before. Yep. And it gets very hard to take any type of action. So if there aren't any more nominations, and I'll leave that open here for just a second, then I think we should um, go back into executive session, or let's just say 10 minutes and see if we can figure out something. Sound good? Yep. Okay. All right, so we will be back here, let's just say 1040 and again, um, same RCW 42.30.1101H. This is for the qualifi qualifications of a candidate for appointment, and we do anticipate action, or at least I hope. Okay. Okay, Council, we got about one more minute. Okay, I've got 1040. Lita, can you confirm we're good to go? Okay. Okay, Council. Um, Deputy Mayor Clark, did you have a motion? Yeah, I move to table items 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 to a date uh, best determined by staff. Second. Deputy Mayor Clark, would you like to speak to your motion? Uh, essentially, we have people, uh, consultants falling off the line, not able to hang on. So that is it. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Kate, by a vote of 6 0, ayes have it. We will have staff determine the best uh, place for those to land. Okay, Council, since. Um, We've returned from executive session. If there aren't any more motions to consider, and I will, that's open for someone to nominate, um, then we need to discuss next steps in proceeding. We have the option to open this up again. We have the option to interview people we did not interview. We have until April 17th to make an appointment, so our window is is closing, um, but we do have a month, and we can add meetings if we need to. So would council like to open this back up? Councilmember Moran looks like she's searching for the unmute button. Yep. I am, but I can't find it, so I'm just going to talk. Um, okay, so um, I'd like to see um, maybe uh, Deputy Mayor or one of the other two come up with something to move forward on because um, that we, that's where we seem to be stalled. So I'd, I'd like to see, get an idea from them what, what this needs to move forward.
So Councilmember Moran, do you have a suggestion for how we proceed forward? Should we be opening this back up for applications? No, you know, we've done it. We've got excellent people here. I mean, we could open it up and have more excellent people. Um, I just don't see where it's gonna matter apparently. So um, I'm gonna suggest that we have a meeting on the, uh, as much as I hate to do it, the 29th. I think we might be trying to put one there anyway. Or is that the 22nd? 29th, yes, so we're attempting to put a meeting there anyway. Okay, well then I think this needs to be added to that agenda and... Um, I would okay. turn that into a motion. Okay, I make a motion that this get uh, put onto a meeting uh, to be scheduled on the 29th of March. And I will leave it up to uh, staff or whoever to see where to best place it on the agenda. Okay, so we have something on the agenda, but I think the, and I know we've got other hands raised, I, I promise I will get to you, but I think, I, I'm curious if you have a vision for what we're discussing exactly. The same candidates, a new set of applicants, no, I think we need to go back to the original entire list that we okay. have because we've got plenty of excellent candidates. And so to send it back out to get more plenty of excellent, excellent candidates doesn't seem like a smart move to me at this point in time. Um, so I would, I would okay. say that- Well, we so let's get a second on this and uh, now that there's clarity um, so that we can get this on the agenda. Uh, Deputy Mayor Clark. I would just have an amendment for it so I don't have a amend to the uh, 5th of April meeting instead. Did we get a second on the oh, main no, motion sorry. though? I'll second. Okay, now we have a, a second on the main motion. Now you can make an amendment. Yeah, I'd like to amend to the 5th of April meeting instead of that 29th. Okay, the amendment has been seconded. Deputy Mayor Clark, would you speak to your amendment, please? Um, I have a planned um, absence for that 29th meeting. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, so all those in favor of doing this at the April 5th meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. I think that was a nay from Councilmember Moran. Okay. By a vote of 4-2, we will hold this till the April 5th. I know that's not desirable, but I think we held one of these, Councilmember Moran, when you weren't available either. So I do think it's important that the full council is, be, is available. We need to still move on the initial May, motion. Uh, yes, thank you, Councilmember Train. Okay, so now we are discussing the main motion as amended. So same candidates, April 5th. Discussion. I, I'll just say that I, I, I agree we should be doing this as soon as possible um, on the 29th, but I also think it's um, imperative that the full council is available for that discussion, so. Is there a reason we can't call in? I mean, I'm gonna be out of town and I'm not happy about having it that day either, but I would have to rearrange and call in. I can't speak for another council member. Okay, if there's no more discussion then, um, we are now voting on the main motion as amended. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, by vote of 5-1, motion as amended passes. So we will be bringing this back with the full list of candidates that have already applied for April 5th. Okay, council, now we are on to consent calendar. I would entertain a motion. I wanna pull, um, I think it's number 12. The Sammamish Arts Grant yes. Awards. Okay. Correct. I'd like to pull number seven. Okay. Any others? Okay. 
Okay, we will park those under unfinished business since we just avoided that entire section. So, um, all those in favor of the consent calendar as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, by a vote of six zero, consent calendar is passed. Okay. Presentations and proclamations. Our first proclamation is World Down Syndrome Day. Councilmember Moran, could you read that one? Well, I don't have, does anybody have it up on the screen? Okay, Deputy Mayor Clark says she does. Uh, okay, uh, proclamation World Down Syndrome Day, March 21st, 2022. Whereas approximately one in every 800 children are born with Down syndrome, representing approximately 5,000 births per year in the United States. Whereas Down syndrome is a naturally occurring chromosomal arrangement that has always been a part of the human condition, exists in all regions across the globe and commonly results in variable effects on learning styles, physical characteristics, or health. Whereas people with Down syndrome possess a wide range of abilities and are active par participants in educational, occupational, social, and recreational circles of the community. Whereas recognizing the inherent dignity, worth, and valuable contributions of persons with intellectual disabilities as promoters of the well-being and diversity of our communities and the importance of their individual autonomy and independence, including the freedom to make their own choices. Whereas March 21st, 2022 marks the 16th anniversary of World Down Syndrome Day, the date was selected by Down Syndrome International DSI to signify the uniqueness of Down Syndrome in the triplication of the 21st chromosome and is synonymously used with Down Syndrome. Now, therefore, it be resolved that Mayor Christy Malchow, on behalf of Sammamish City Council, do, does hereby proclaim March 21st, 2022 as World Down Syndrome Day in the city of Sammamish and encourage all citizens, businesses, public and private agencies, media, religious, and educational institutions to join us in promoting awareness of Down Syndrome. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Clark. We do have a second proclamation. This one is for World Autism Awareness Day, which is April 2nd, 2022. Councilmember Lamb, would you be willing to read that one? Don't forget to unmute yourself though. <laughs> proclamation World Autism Awareness Day, April 2nd, 2022. Whereas autism is a pervasive developmental disorder affecting the social communication and behavioral skills of those affected by it and Whereas as more health professionals become proficient in diagnosing autism, more children are being diagnosed on the autism spectrum, resulting in rates as high as one in 68 children nationally. And whereas while there is no cure for autism, it is well documented that if individuals with autism receive early interventions, environmental accommodations and supports throughout their lives, they lead significantly improved lives. And Whereas individuals with autism often require a lifetime of specialized and community support services to ensure their health and safety to support families resilience as they manage the psychological and financial challenges autism can present. Whereas we recognize the challenges that people with autism face. We also recognize the unique strengths and perspectives they bring to our lives and welcome their full contribution and participation in our schools, workplaces, and public facilities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Christy Malchow, on behalf of the Sammamish City Council, do hereby proclaim April 2nd, 2022, as World Autism Awareness Day in the city of Sammamish, and urge all employees and residents to participate in our municipality's National Autism Awareness Month activities in order to become better educated about autism and create a better community for individuals with autism. Thank you, Councilmember Lamb. Okay, Council, next we're going to address the pulled items from consent. First is item seven. Councilmember Lamb, you pulled this one, so I'll let you speak to it. So we heard from a resident concerned about the amount of mowing around um, the storm water retention ponds. Um, and if we are gonna be a national bee city, then I think it's fair that we explore whether or not, um, whether we can 
do more native plantings around those um, areas. And I think, you know, in general, you know, I, I don't have an issue around, you know, hiring in, in this contract. It's just, can we explore a couple of, as a starting point, a couple of areas that we can have native plants and see how that goes. I think we've got uh, Jeff Elikish from our Public Works team and Audrey Starcy here, also from Public Works, to address some of your concerns. So, Audrey, Jeff? Uh, yeah, we were, um, I guess, coming on. I didn't hear all of what Amy had to say, so I'm wondering if she would be kind enough to repeat. As we were coming on, I didn't hear your full um, reasoning, Amy, if you would. Oh, so the first item on the consent agenda is that um, we'll be designating Sammamish um, as a B city U.S. affiliate, and that would include, you know, encouraging more native plants and um, flowering shrubs that encourage pollinators. And so we mow all around our city, um, the stormwater ponds, and we did receive a letter from a resident um, wondering perhaps, and I do agree that if we are going to be a bee city, we should explore whether or not all our stormwater um, pond areas need to be mowed. Maybe we just take a look at a couple of them that have more um, natural environments and whether or not that would be fitting to have native plants be um, planted there initially. And it's not like we need to do everything like all at one time, maybe there's just a few. Uh, would you be able tomorrow to share the letter from the resident so that staff could have an opportunity to review? Uh, Jeff, off y you guys were actually CC'd on it, just as an FYI. Just now? or No, when, when it came in. Today? Yes. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I've not seen it, that's why I'm asking. That's okay. I can speak a bit to the, the mowing that we do perform. It, it is a minimum that we do perform. Um, we will be bringing this operational item back to council for consideration if you would like to change the frequency in future years as part of our stormwater rate study this year. Um, right now we do mow our ponds once a year. That's to maintain the functionality that they were designed for, for stormwater retention and detention, and that's required by our stormwater permit. And um, much of that reasoning is so that we can inspect the ponds properly to make sure that they're functioning as designed. Council Member Howe? Okay, I, I couldn't hear you that well, but I was asking, I was gonna ask about the mowing because there's some that are no mow and they get mowed. Um, and the stormwater stewards are, are, the, are a terrific group of, our, of individuals who are, who've been working with the city to try to earmark uh, uh, those areas that are not supposed to be mowed and somehow <laughs> they get mowed anyway. And they are the ones that are also doing the uh, native plant restoration in those areas to try to suck up as much groundwater as possible. So I'm wondering if there isn't a cooperation there with the stormwater stewards. We, we do work with the stormwater stewards at some of our ponds. Council Member Treen. Yeah, I move that we authorize the city manager to execute a contract with the Soward Excavation LLC in the amount not to exceed $241,119 for residential stormwater pond vegetation removal. I second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Councilmember Treen, did you want to speak to your motion? I sure do. As, a, as somebody who used to work as a seasonal employer for the King County Parks Department under the direction of Dow Constantine, I'm fully aware of the fact that stormwater ponds throughout King County have a challenge in that there is a removal of invasive plants and over time in these stormwater facilities, which also includes the city of Sammamish. And the removal of these plants is necessary for the highest functioning of these stormwater pond areas. So I ask that you please consider voting for this and approving this measure. Thank you, back to you, Mayor. Thank you. So. Um, for what it's worth, Councilmember Lamb, um, several years ago, and this is probably like when I was first on the council, I was concerned about the pond mowing too, and I remember asking the questions about it. Um, and I was told that 
we really do need to mow the ponds. And I think Audrey spoke to it in part, which is their functionality. And a lot of them end up with cattails. Mm -hmm. um, now there's a, there's two sides to this issue. There's, you know, the majority of st storm water ponds that we have, but then there's the ones that are designated as no mow. That's a, a different issue. And I think that one, I think staff can likely address so that that d is not a continued practice. Um, but as far as regular stormwater ponds, it is a balancing act. And while I very much appreciate the need to protect native plants, the reality is, is that they weren't natively there anyway because the stormwater ponds were man-made and created and they serve a higher function in preservation of um, the quality of, of water and the volume of water that comes off of any um, developed site. So I think it's very important that we continue this practice to maintain the viability and duration that these stormwater ponds function so that we can protect some of our creeks like Ebright, George Davis, um, and the like. So um, I am supportive of this motion. Councilmember Moran. Just since I've been on the council, there's been numerous uh, uh, times during the year, in particular in summertime and in early fall, where we get a lot of complaints from people that live around them that they haven't been mowed during that time frame or during the year, and therefore they look at them as a fire hazard. So um, I, I was told that this was one of the reasons they do mow them once or twice or whatever time of the year is because they do have to maintain them to some extent so that they don't have them become a fire hazard. Council Member Lamb. So there are ones that are designated as no mow, but they do mow. Um, maybe we could just, you know, kind of confirm the ones that don't, so they don't mow. I think that's reasonable. We can go back and check. Hey, the, the ponds that are designated as no mode do have signs in place mm -hmm. and they're, they're earmarked and they are not mowed by our contractors. We can double check. Council Member Miranda, do you have something additional or hands still up? Okay. All right. Seeing no more discussion, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. By a vote of 6 0, uh, the item has passed. Thank you, Council. Okay, and the second item that was pulled from consent was item 12. Councilmember Moran, you pulled that. I'll let you speak to that. I did, and I'm just looking through the rest from here. So um, one of the things that have come up in the past when we've gotten these um, brought to us uh, in spring is that we've asked for pictures of stuff um, because otherwise we're kind of cornered by the time the project is being done. And so I'm looking at the couple of them here that have got artwork and I'm, I'm not seeing a picture. And so I don't know if there's words with it, which is what there was a big commotion about a couple of years ago. So um, we, I know I asked last time that and if we're gonna have artwork on these kinds of lists that needs to come with a picture. Mr. City Manager, is there any staff, I suspect probably not hanging on the line that might be able to speak to this? Mr. City Manager. Um, Thank oh, you. Wonderful, Anjali's on. <laughs> okay, Anjali's I am, there. but I'm, I was going to request Lita to promote Chris Jordan, who would okay. have the answer to that. There he is. We can see you, Chris. Can you hear us? No, I just started to hear you. Sorry. Okay. Can you ask the question? Um, so we had item 12 was pulled off consent. And Councilmember Moran, maybe you can repeat what you yeah. stated for. Yeah. So, um, and you'll know exactly which, which projects I'm talking about from the past. But we have asked that when we're having any sort of lists that are coming from the arts books that uh, we see a picture with it so that we don't end up with the same... Um, stuff that we've ended up with with problems in the past where, you know, something's starting to go in and we're, they're going, well, we were planning on it going here. And of course, the council didn't know where it was going to go, um, who okayed it to go there, what is it going to look like? 
Um, so we had asked for art pieces and stuff like that, oh, you. you know, to- Councilmember Moran, I hate to cut you off. We need to extend. We're actually a couple okay. minutes past. Can I, I get a motion? to extend to 11.15. Thank you. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. Okay, by vote of 5-1, we'll extend to 11-15. Council Member Moran, continue. Yeah, so um, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to get caught in the same spot I was in before where I had people calling and sending tons of emails at me. So um, do we have a picture that we can show for, all, for the artwork on these? We do. Um, the lady, I think you're talking about the show mosaic one, um, the two by three feet um, mosaic. And where, is, we do and where it's going to go? No, so the reason we haven't done a location thing, which we will bring back to the council, is more because if the Arts Commission and staff work with this person before the grant process, it's just not equal to everybody else. So it's more just approving if they get voted in and the Arts Commission votes in the B, they get the grant, then we'll work on the process of location for that. So the photos, I can add photos, especially um, moving forward. I just don't want to, we get a lot of photos or examples of their work. So um, we'll pare it down. I just don't want to overload the agenda, but. She doesn't have specific examples yet because she's going to work with the community, like, like the specific artwork, but she has examples of other places what she's done before, which I can send to the council on that part. So is there anything that's going to happen with this if we don't, if we bring this to the fifth so that we can see? Yeah, we, we would just have to, we would just have to hold it. So we would have to, if we didn't, we just, um, I would notify all of them that the decision hasn't been made yet. Then we'll just, um, do if you do approve it or not on the fifth, then I'll we'll do the contracts if you do approve it then. So Deputy Mayor Clark. Is this just in reference to the progress mosaic? Well I'm that's what I'm looking for to see if there's any more art on here. Yeah, no, I was I just wondering because I, I have done one of the projects, but a small version and there is no words. It's only the colors. So if that's any no words yeah, no words. It's just a location part, so that's not, has not been determined, and that's something that, because the commission would probably want that as a as per permanent piece as possible. That would probably have to bring back the council and the location once we figure that out with the commission and staff. So great. Yeah, I didn't know if the concern was words on the mosaic or not, but there are not any. Okay. Okay, that answered my question. Um, although I. I um, I get extremely nervous when I, um, when we don't have a spot picked out for anything and then all of a sudden we have a bunch of people yelling because they wanted one place and people wanted someplace else. Um, okay. Chris, is there a process through the Arts Commission where location would then be identified where the public would be able to provide input or no? We could do that. So that's something we could do. I just don't think we'll be able to pick a location. Like they could work with the commission prior to the grant process. It just didn't seem fair than, than other people. We gotta give the same opportunity to everybody on that. So, um, and we're only giving out 3000. So if they're only doing some small piece, we don't want them to do all this work. And then if they don't get right. accepted, then nothing happens. And also this is a year long grant. So a lot of this stuff, they'll be working through a lot of these other programs like the drawing herd. She has to do all this marketing, build it up, do the workshops, but that stuff's not going to happen until later this summer. So okay. it's kind of a process for them. So, but we can figure that that's kind of steps that we probably need to figure out in the future. This is just our second year. So I think the commission is open to it. So whatever works okay. best for staff I, and council. Maybe that will help field the concern that council member Moran has brought up relative to location is that Council Member Randy could even offer up a motion that the Arts Commission open up to the general public the location so that the general public is guiding where it goes. And that way, right. if there's an argument about where it ended up, they yep. had an opportunity to uh, provide that. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I was oh, so uh, sorry. Anjali's got her hand up. I don't know if she's got uh, something yeah. to. Uh, I am just a little concerned that I wouldn't open up something of this scale to the public. I would prefer that staff came up with some options of where we would want the art. And Chris, feel free to speak up if the Arts Commission has discussed differently. But I would prefer because we often get into a lot of artwork where we bring our planning team on board and discuss where sculptures go, where art goes. 
So um, I don't know if you'd want to open up something of this small scale to the public to take. Well, like so if staff comes up with, you know, a few of like locations, I think that would then end up in a, hopefully in the packet for the Arts Commission to then make that decision. That would forward the public then to maybe give public comment to the Arts Commission on those staff chosen locations. Would that be a fair process or something that would yeah, work? I think, <laughs> I'm yeah, trying to find a I compromise here. It, yeah, I think even with this piece, they kind of want it community driven. So I think they okay. like that. Then that Honestly, satisfies that if, like that if they're so, engaging the community yeah. in it. Yeah. I mean, if it's a, if it were a bigger one, I'd, I'd want a lot more community input. But I think that this for this particular, it's not that big. It's a, uh, and, and if I'm understanding what I'm envisioning, um, I, it, it would be fine. I mean, I think it, it could go just about any place, but I just don't want to end up in a bad situation. Okay. Okay, then move to accept um, with with the idea that this goes to the Arts Commission with a list of recommended locations from uh, staff. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, by a vote of 6 0. The Arts Grants, Spanish Arts Grant Awards are passed. Okay, Council. Um, council reports. Uh, council Member Lamb, did you want to highlight anything from your written report that's included? Um, excuse me, Mayor? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but before you get to reports, because I know we're nearing the end, it's a late, it's the late hour, and I know you're all probably anxious to adjourn, but I just wanted to say I've spent some time reading Robert's Rules of Order, and I just wanted to clarify for the group that when a motion fails because it's a 3-3 tie is what happened with several of the candidates to fill the vacancy on the council, it can be um, brought forward for a motion for reconsideration by someone that was on the side that voted against the motion. And I know that someone tried to do that. And I said, oh, no, you can't do that okay. because you weren't on the prevailing side. But if it's a 3-3 tie, someone that voted against can bring it for reconsideration. I don't know if that would have made a difference or if council wants to do that. But okay. I wanted to make that procedural clarification in case someone is interested either tonight or in the future. Appreciate that. Yeah, I think council got an email this morning or this, after, this evening. Um, I forwarded it to <laughs> the city attorney. So thank, thank you, Gary. So it's Councilmember Moran, read quickly. <laughs> yes, thank you, Councilmember Moran. That was your initial motion. You were trying to make another motion, I believe, for Mr. Rodabaugh. So um, certainly, um, motion would be appropriate under council reports, I suppose, if we want to circle back on that. No, um, I'll and, just wait. Okay. If not, then we have April fifth to contend with it as well. Okay, sorry, Councilmember Lamb, did you have anything out of your report that you wanted to highlight? Um, I'll just make it quick. Um, I was at the SCA Public Issues Committee meeting and there was two topics of discussion that is worth highlighting. One was a discussion regarding ARPA funds where different cities shared how they were spending. So I did reach out to staff to try to get um, sort of like a spreadsheet on how we've spent our ARPA funds. And there was also a discussion on bike helmet regulations. And um, I'd like to bring up on, a, on an agenda item on whether or not we want to have a bicycle helmet regulation in Sammamish. Um, um, on Thursday, I'll be attending a GREI um, meeting, which is governing for racial equity and inclusion meeting. GREI is a regional partnership of government jurisdictions working to achieve racial equity. Um, we also, I also received a letter from the Sammamish Youth Board, the, the Snake River Removal Dam letter of support, and they rewrote their letter and they wanted to bring it back for another presentation. So um, I wanted to know if we were in agreement, the council would like to have them come back. I was fine with it. Is that a motion? Yeah, we need to have a motion. Okay. I motion that the Sammamish Youth Board 
um, come back and make a presentation regarding the removal of dams at Snake River. I second, I'll second that. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'll just make a quick plug while I appreciate their things. I think we have so many other irons in the fire right now, and so I'm not gonna support this. I think we've got so much city business we need to tackle. Okay, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, by a vote of four, two, ayes have it. It will come back. I'll have staff determine when that's most appropriate. Okay, if that's all, Councilmember Lamb, we'll move to Councilmember Howe, who also has a written report. Is there anything you wanna highlight in here? Or? The only thing I will highlight is uh, for right now is that, well, two things. First of all, for the re report for the Eastside Transportation Board, uh, there's an opportunity for us to potentially look at how we might connect the, uh, the uh, Emerald Necklace or the trail system around the Sammamish Plateau with other trail systems. And so uh, that is a meeting that we will be having with council member Sarah Perry, um, hopefully next week. So I'll just point that out. And then there were many very strong presentations made by organizations that had um, um, uh, were successful with their grant requests with the PRC. So say, um, I think there's some lessons learned there about what we could maybe do for ourselves. So they, they were really wonderful projects. Um, so that, that's all for my council reports. I do have a motion I would like to make, so let me know when the well, appropriate time uh, is. Okay, H hold up. We're, yeah. we're at 1114. Yep. We're gonna need to extend again. I know our deputy city manager has something to report out on as well, so I had to entertain a motion. I would extend to 1130. We don't have to go to 1130. Move to extend to 1130. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, by a vote of 4-2, we'll extend to 11.30. Council Member Howe. So I can go forward with my motion then. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought we were going with, uh, I thought that there's another report. Of there, there likely are. I need to go through. I haven't gone through the rest of the council members yet. You, I just started with the two that provided a written report. I need to ask I'm the rest of the council if they have a report. I also believe our city manager or deputy city manager has something to report out as well. So is there anyone else that wanted to provide the council with a report? Okay, seeing none. Mr. City Manager? Thank you, Mayor. Council, um, I'm going to promote... Uh, Jeff Ellicus, our public works director. Some information came up about the possibility of us competing for a county grant on transportation. Jeff. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, members of the council and city manager. Um, every other year, uh, Puget Sound Regional Council puts out a call for projects uh, to receive federal funding. The focus of the PSRC grant funds are associated with uh, regional town centers, manufacturing areas, and uh, roads and bikes, bike routes and sidewalks that support those two things. Uh, and there are two buckets of money that occur. There's a regional bucket, and then there's a countywide bucket. Uh, the, the regional bucket, we, have, we, we don't qualify because we've not identified our town center as a regional center by definition doesn't fit into that category and therefore we don't really qualify very well for any regional funds um, and so that's a process that's uh, unto itself and is, is taking its own course however there is the countywide process and uh, there's a category called uh, local centers which our town center does fit in and we do have a couple arterials that support uh, the town center uh, for instance uh, northeast 8th between 212th and 218th and then coming around the corner by Big Rock Park, heading up to on 218 from Northeast 8th to Northeast 4th. Maybe they got the North and South mixed up. But anyway, um, and then going all, all the way over to um, Inglewood um, on 218th, that, that's also an arterial that, could be, that does support the town center. So the, so the way that the process works now is, is staff would need to um, submit an intent to apply and that occurs here at the end of the month. And then 
Then there's the official application for the countywide process that's due at the end of April. And so what staff is proposing to do is come back on either the, I don't know what meeting yet, but either the second or third meeting in April and propose a project or project list that we could pursue for grant application. Uh, we're limited uh, to the maximum request being $5.48 million. Um, if we were in construction, that would mean a lot. Um, we're not in construction on any of our projects. We would be in the PE phase or preliminary engineering um, for that acronym. Uh, the good news is, is the grant monies are in the category or the magnitude of 86.5% uh, federal grants. And so local monies would be 13.5. It would be staff's recommendation when we come back to you in April to propose at least one segment, if not two, um, towards uh, the PE phase of the project. Uh, those funds would not be available, however, even if we were successful, to be spent until 25 and 26. However, there are advanced funding agreements that can occur where you spend your own money, and then, you know, on the first day of eligibility on the 20, you know, year 2025, you can submit your bill. So there, there are those possibilities. But uh, I just want to be crystal clear: the monies are technically not available. We're applying in 22 for monies that are in 25, 26. And that's just how it works. Um, the council may decide when we come back to you in April that this isn't the time or the, the priority or the commitment. When, when we come to you in April, one segment could be as much as $10 million of, of la, uh, latent commitment towards a project to as much as 20 or $25 million, depending upon what's, what's chosen. And this might be just a tad premature because we don't have our transportation capital improvement plan in play. We have the last one, which was adopted in 2019, and um, these projects were there at that time. But, um, you know, this is where we are. We, we find ourselves with a bucket of money that we may have a project that qualifies. However, it may not be the highest priority in the city or the city may not be willing to make a commitment to the future. So we wanted to give you a heads up that there, with the Eastside Transportation Partner, I, I know uh, Council Member Howe, you had an opportunity to listen in on those projects and presentations. I wanted to be sure that from your staff's perspective at the city of Sammamish, how we view that and how we want to advance something for your consideration as early as April. So back to you, Mayor. Great. Jeff, thanks for that update. I think um, being able to get 86 some odd percent um, for our grant funding is pretty good. So. Anyway, we'll look forward to hearing from staff on those projects in April. Um, Mr. Deputy City Manager, you as well had a report. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. And I, um, we're going to bring Mike Sug up with me to help with this one. Um, appreciate the Council's patience on this. Um, as you have received in an email previously, we are announcing here tonight that City Hall will reopen starting on April 4th. So with that, um, what we wanted to do tonight is walk through just really quickly what that's gonna look like. And um, also, because the building will be reopening, uh, it is my presumption, and Council can tell me otherwise, but my presumption will be that Council would like to start opening the meetings up in person. Um, for our council members and the public that would desire to attend in person starting with the April 5th, 2022 meeting. Um, council meetings will remain hybrid for the public and for any staff or council that need to participate remotely, um, but the city will be planning to have the doors open for the meetings and will be prepared for in-person attendance starting with that meeting. Um, in terms of how we are reopening in-person services, I'm gonna ask Mike to jump on and throw up on the screen. So as I said, we'll be starting to be open to the public on April 4th, 2022. Mike, if you go to the next slide, please. So one of the things that I wanted to highlight here is what you're seeing here are on the left-hand side or the online, all the services that we have been providing online and will continue to provide online. In terms of in-person service, you'll see on the right-hand side the dates that we are starting those in-person services. 
Um, I have been asked by the folks that um, do this actual do this stuff to for some patience on the public's part in particular around passport services. Um, we are a little short staffed, so right now we are only have a half a day a week to be able to do that until we can get another staff person on board and trained up. That turns out to be a more lengthy training process than you might expect. Um, so somewhere down the road, we will be able to um, increase that, but for right now, it's about a half a day a week. Mike, if you'd jump to the next slide, please. So I just wanted to give a snapshot of what is happening on what day, because we are staggering services. And I wanna be really clear that um, unless it says drop in, the rest are by appointment and we will have the website updated um, in the next day or so with how to access those appointments. The bookings will not be able to go live until we are hoping the 21st. So you won't be able to go online and click and, and get an in-person appointment until the 21st, hopefully. That's a target. So uh, please be patient as we try to um, sort out what the new normal is gonna be moving forward. And then just to set expectations, the appointments will, be, will go out 30 days, and that's a rolling 30 days. So you can schedule up to a month in advance, but no more than that, if that makes sense. Um, one other piece that I know is an important part in all this, um, as we have been following the guidelines and the orders from the CDC and the state and county uh, public health departments, um, as of the opening of the building on April 4th, we will be lifting the mask mandate in the building um, and we'll be moving to masks recommended but not required starting the week of April 4th. So um, with that, I think that covers, oh, other thing, the building itself will be open on normal hours, pre-pandemic hours, 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday, just want to be clear that the services themselves have time windows for in-person um, so that we have time to do the rest of the staff work that we need to do during the day. So that was a lot. It's late at night. <laughs> so I want to offer if there are any questions from council um, at this point in time with the uh, understanding that we will, the, all of this will be live on the website within the next day. Wanna make sure that we are, have everything correct so that when it goes out that everyone has uh, the same information. Um, David Pyle is also reminding me, if for some reason we are short staffed at the counter and we do not have anyone to cover the front area, we might intermittently and temporarily have to close the doors if there's no one to staff the front. Um, we are a little short staffed there. We are trying to hire up, but we are not fully staffed at the moment. So thank you, David, for that clarification in the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, Madam Mayor, I'll turn it back over to you for any questions or comments. Great. Uh, Council, are there questions about the reopening? Um, our Deputy City Manager mentioned one thing, which was council meetings and our ability to have the, the hybrid. I don't know if there was a, a true question for council in there about having the public in here as well. Um, I think I heard that question and so I guess I would turn and pose that to um, my fellow council members is that. Um, and, and Madam Mayor, if I could just clarify, the reason that I bring that up is the governor has not yet lifted the emergency declaration for council meetings. So until the governor does, it is voluntary on the council's behalf as to whether or not the meetings are open to the public. So um, with that, I'll turn it back over Perfect. to you. Perfect, that's helpful. Yes, so Pro Proclamation 20-28 is the one that's guiding and allowing us to have council members at home or in council chambers. So um, that can prevail, but I guess the question becomes is, you know, with City Hall opening April 5th, does council want to then also allow council chambers to be full open to the public as well and until the proclamation is formally removed. And if we're going to have some council members at home, some here, I don't know. I'm, I'm throwing it out to council for discussion relative to whether or not we do that. I think we probably should decide so that staff can be prepared to message that out to the general public if they can come in person or if they still need to provide their public comment 
uh, remotely. So, got a whole lot of hands up. Uh, Councilmember Howe. Um, I would want to follow guidelines that made the staff feel safe. So that that's my primary concern. We've been surviving with the pu public, removed, you know, for this length of time. I just want to ensure the safety of the staff. So I would be fine with it, council being here, public not being here, but phoning phoning it in like they have been until such time as it's appropriate for people to be here. Deputy Mayor Clark. Yeah, I agreed, and I don't know what extra level of preparation there would be on city staff, too, if we're already short on everything. I don't know what would need to happen, so I would kind of refer to staff on what is best for them. Yeah, I think likely it's setting up chairs out in the in council chambers, but I'm, I'm okay if, you know, <laughs> I guess it's kind of easing back into it if council's sitting in their seats and then we wait till the proclamation is removed by the governor and then open it back up. Um, because our meetings are accessible to the public by way of, of Zoom and phone calls. Uh, absolutely, and thank you, Mayor. And, and just to, uh, again, to clarify, we will always have the ability for the public to do, um, participate remotely, regardless of whether we are in person or not. So I just wanted to clarify that. Perfect. Um, to Deputy Mayor Clark's comment, I think, you know, we are planning on doing, you know, social distancing chairs. I think the recommendation is still to continue to, um, you know, try it as much as possible to socially distance while in the in the room. And so I think we're going to, um, the, the front area will be set up to provide um, maximum um, distance from folks. We have some barriers that are ready to go just to try to make it as, uh, as helpful as possible in that regard. I do have one question as it pertains to like out in the future after the proclamation is removed. Um, is it feasible for staff to continue to allow the public to provide comment remotely? I think it does increase our ability to get public comment. Um, Cause I know 630 can be really challenging if you're scooting kids around to soccer practice or something. Thank you, Mayor, and that's the, the goal. We've invested um, in the technology, and thanks a big thanks to our t IT department. We are fully capable and ready to move forward permanently with hybrid. Um, this, this room is all set up for it. We, are, um, we, we intend on continuing on that path, both for the public and for staff. Uh, we think it's a great um, staff retention tool to not have staff sitting in here with us until late hours, but to be able to be at home and not have to try to, as you were pointing out, Mayor, to try to juggle um, all the other things that happen on a regular evening. So council, it's 1130, so we either need a motion I to adjourn. I thank Christy for the good of the order. Pardon? I do have uh, something I want to bring up, up under good of the order. Do it real quick, because we're out of time, unless you want to extend. Um, well, it is, I got a phone call this week from somebody who was telling me that had seen in the paper that we were pursuing and we had a long discussion apparently about at our retreat about the um the emerald necklace and i told her i had no idea what she was talking about and uh she said oh yeah and then so i went to to look it up and sure enough um it was actually in the reporter the Issaquah reporter that somehow we had a discussion and, so, um, Councilmember Moran, I hate to cut you off. It's now 11.31, so you either need to extend the meeting or move to adjourn. Okay. All right, well, I'll um, extend for five minutes. Second. Okay. So, we're motion okay, is to extend so to 11. We have to vote on it first. Motion is to extend to 11.36. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. <laughs> By a vote of four two, we'll extend for five minutes. Okay, so um, after I did a little bit more looking at it, and then I went back to look at our retreat stuff. This was this was a, a one or two sentence, and uh, that was brought up by Karen Howe, Council Member Howe, sorry. And um, and my comment here is that uh, one, you know, this was we were at the retreat. We had options to bring up something, um, two things that we or two or three things that we thought we wanted. To focus on this was nowhere on a list um, it wasn't on the work plan it wasn't brought up for discussion to be on the work plan it's not in our city um, and so now um, all of a sudden you know uh, and there's a lot that would go with this because with this also comes with the fact that there's you know 700 acres of um, 
TDRs and there's not a receiving area in the city for the TDRs yet. So there's a whole ton of work that would go with this with staff. And, and this is something that one, um, the council should have been informed about before it was ever put on paper or anything. But two, um, that we were all of a sudden gonna start working on something not even in our city. And so, so I'm just wondering how it ever got this far and is this the best use of staff's time? So council member Moran, if I can ask for some clarification, I have no idea what article you're talking about. So maybe you can send the article to us. And and I, I guess I will circle back because um, council member Howe did say something about the emerald necklace and meeting with council member Perry. So I guess my first question would be, are you wearing your council hat doing that? Because we don't have direction from the council to pursue the emerald necklace at this time, or are you wearing your personal hat? In which case, you're welcome to talk to her about it. Actually, it was, um, I was going to put members of the uh, Sammamish Friends in touch with her and uh, the former Parks and Rec Director of King County because she was the one that was most instrumental in working out that trail system. I don't have the background on it to do it, to be honest. So I need to actually lean on the other uh, volunteers to do that. Does that make sense? It does to me. I'm not sure. Uh, Again, I haven't seen the article, so I oh, the don't. Article is. I don't know what it says. And th there is no work plan. I mean, there is no work associated with this. It's so there's just, no. It, it doesn't. The city. There. Nobody at the city has any work. None of the staff has any work on this. No. No. Not to my knowledge. Okay. Well, I was just. I mean, I was surprised when I see our retreat in a paper, and it, all of a sudden it's like, well, we didn't really talk about that. Council Member Howe, did you have any further stuff? Uh, I was going to uh, move that we instruct the city manager to direct the city's legal staff to immediately deliver numbered individual copies of the unredacted investigative report regarding the city manager RCW 42.30.1101i to each council member for their, for their use. Sorry, can you repeat that motion? Yes. I, and I have it written down, so I move that we instruct the city manager to direct the city's legal staff to immediately deliver numbered individual copies of the unredacted investigative report regarding the city manager, RCW 42.30.110 to each council member. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Council Member Howe, do you wanna to speak to your motion? Very briefly, just that um, I joined the council early so that I could get access to this report. I found out later that many people um, had this report read to them. The report is housed someplace else. We don't have ready access to it. And there, we need access to the, the work product from the legal team that has been paid for. Council Member Moran? Uh, well, I'm not sure what instant access we need. I have no problem with it being placed at the city so that we need to come in and look at it in a file or something to do that. But we don't ask in any of our lawsuits or anything that we have, uh, that we see the, all the, the raw notes or the raw stuff that's put together from the attorneys. So um, if, if we're going to do that, I'm good with that. Um, but I think it should all be housed at City Hall. Uh, at least we should at least put it on the agenda to have that discussion because I'd like to hear what the attorneys, all the different attorneys would have to say about that. Council, I hate to do this, we're out of time again, so if we're gonna continue to have this discussion, we're going to need a motion to extend. I move we extend by 10 minutes. Second. It's been moved and seconded. <clears throat> all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, three, three, motion fails. So. Okay. We're, we're cancel. It's 11.36 once it hits 11.30. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, I need um, our city attorney. I don't know what we do when um, we're out of time on our council meeting. Motion fails to extend. Motion fails to adjourn. I have to say this is a first. <laughs> okay, so 
the motion failed to adjourn as well as to extend. Um, you know, I think ultimately all the rules of procedure are meant to capture a council majority will. And so I'm just not really sure based on these contradictory <laughs> actions, like what is the will of the majority of the council? Is it to continue to meet for another five to 10 minutes or do you really just want to adjourn? I feel like, you know, I think you might we might want to renew one of those to really clarify what you need to do tonight. Well, we've got hands up, including Councilmember Moran and our city manager. I think if we're going to continue to want to converse on this, we're going to have to extend the meeting. Otherwise, um, I, I understand our city attorney's position, but we have only authorized to meet up until a certain point. We've now passed that point and we don't have a motion to extend the meeting beyond that point. I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. By a vote of 6-0, we're adjourned.